Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Or no, good evening. I'm sorry, y'all. Good evening. How's everybody doing tonight? How is everybody doing tonight? So... <laughs> Thank everybody for coming in. Go ahead and hit that like button. <laughs> subscribe if you have not already. Just hit the subscription button. No one will know if you subscribe. Because it says that 50% of y'all that watch and tune in actually don't subscribe. Just hit the subscription button. It's not going to hurt you. 
Hey, Mr. Cook. All right. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. We have a great show tonight. A great show, right? Because we're going to have a discussion. Everybody's been talking. Uh, women's basketball uh, Twitter has been talking. Other swack schools have been talking. The Clarion Ledger with JT Keith has been talking. And what they've been saying ain't, ain't, I mean, just anything, just anything coming out, just anything coming out, right? You don't know what's what, but I'm not, I'm not turning on my camera today. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No camera today. <laughs> okay, so. But that's okay. No camera needed because this discussion today is going to be on Coach Tamika Reed and her breaking the internet. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to copy and paste. Uh oh. I want to copy and paste. Uh, KC fourteen hundred media. I want to copy and paste their live that they had uh, last Wednesday. And the reason why I feel like it's so important to copy and paste that particular live is because that's the only time we heard uh, Coach Reed really speak, right? And if you were listening, if you were listening to that particular live with coach Tamika Reed in her and her own words she specifically said Ashley and I were on contract and x y and z meaning her and the AD were talking about the contract in that conversation it's on <laughs> It's on KC 1400 Media. It's literally their live. And also you just need to just listen to the listen to the interview. Well, it was it was like a conversation, you know? And she was just being asked questions and she was having a conversation. Y'all, let me concentrate. Uh-uh, not Coach Green in the comments cutting up after he been missing for a whole year. Don't worry, Co Coach Green will not be getting on no lives over here. Okay, so everybody, I need y'all to type allegedly in the chat. I need about 10 alleged. At least 10. Good Lord. Everything that I'm saying is alleged. For the record. All right. I did want to share this because I think it's funny. But it's true. It is so true. Okay. Uh, so... Every time I see something citing JT Keith of the Clarion Ledger speaking on anything Jackson State related, I cringe. And I don't mean that in a derogatory way, but I just, I, he just, you know, he has a way of reporting. And so what's happening is a lot of the, um, news articles that are coming out about coach Tamika Reed and Jackson State and women's basketball they're citing JT Keith in their articles and what do we know about JT Keith well 
what we know about JT Keith and Clarion Ledger is sometimes they can leave some things to the imagination, leave some facts out. So that's why um, when uh, Coach Prime, when they were talking about how much he made, they were like, oh my God, he's only making $300,000 a year. He's only making that. No, that's what is coming out of Jackson State's budget for his pay. He has something that we call a supplement. His salary is supplemented and he's making over $1.5 million. Nevertheless, we don't have to get on that. The point is... The point is that whenever he speaks, um, you know, and let's just keep it a book. These news, the news cycle every 24 hours is a different story, right? So it was Tulane and then today Tulane named their head coach. So now we're looking at Tennessee because Tennessee fired their coach, um, I want to say, yesterday. Or was that today? I was feeling a little bit under the weather yesterday, so everything's a blur. Um, but Tennessee just fired their coach. And Mr. Tolbert, Coach Tamika, has been getting a supplement, which is why when folks keep on saying her other salary is low, it's not, that's not how much she was actually making. All right, so. All right, so. Okay, let me see. I got one allegedly. I don't know if that's supposed to be allegedly. I'll allow it. <laughs> All right, we got our 10. We got our 10. So let's get back to the swing of things, right? Let's get, let's get, okay. So now this alleged that I'm alleging, I I went to a source close to uh, Jackson State University who uh, wants to re remain anonymous, but they are close to uh, Jackson State. I didn't go off of JT Keith. I went and got my own source, you know, cause I'm in the media now. So off the books, I can, I can confirm that allegedly Coach Reed was offered the $1 million four year contract. What y'all think about that? So it was roughly 150,000 and they've upped it to 100,000 per year base. We talking about base now. So with the base contract um that doesn't include supplement So if allegedly she was making 300000 in previous years, that would make the supplement amount about 150000 So that would bring her up to base contract plus supplement would put her up at about 400000 Anybody who read anything that says that she was at 135 or she was this. This is what we call um, a base pay, right? This is the contract. Um, this is what the 
Jackson State pays directly to her. So that's what comes out of Jackson State's budget, right? But once again, that does not include her supplement. The same, the same way that Coach Prime had a base pay and he made how much money he made, Coach Reed has a base pay. They are offering $250,000 per year base. So basically, she should be making somewhere around 400,000. She should be making around 400,000. And I don't know who this person is, but I can tell you right now. Coach Reed does not want to be an assistant to nobody's program. So if she is going to move on, she's going to be moving on as the head, as the head coach. She would never take a running a, a running back coach pos, coaching position. So <laughs> she's not getting ready to be on nobody's nothing. What? No. She's not getting ready to take any type of position. It's head coach or nothing, okay? Head coach is the floor. <laughs> um, so let's talk about Twitter and the women's basketball Twitter. And what about JSU women's basketball expenses, travels, meals, hotel? What does that have to do with anything? Women's basketball expenses, as far as travels, meals, and hotels, have always been taken care of. She's never had a complaint about that. So I'm not sure why, why we're talking about that. All right, um, so what I'm going to do once again, let me find this. There's two, two things that I want you guys to really watch, okay? Because I think once you've watched in its entirety uh, the questions that she answered and you watch the 700 Club, no, we can't say with 100% for certain that Coach Reed isn't going to leave, but... I just uh, copy and paste it in the chat. This is Ken Clark's live. And this was, oh no, you can ask a question. You can ask a question. Um, let me see if I can find you an answer. Hmm. Where was it on Instagram? Was it on Instagram that Coach Reed was like, I told my, kid, uh, my kids that they was going to fly to, uh, charter and we got them the charter jet i'm gonna find it for you yeah one of one of coach reed's to-do list certainly wasn't that okay so um <clears throat> this is to uh the young man who uh, was talking about what about their travel and, huh? They got a chartered flight.
they get the charter flights. Come on now. All right. Charter flight, that's when you have to walk to the plane. Um, so back to what I was talking about now. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Why y'all? Listen, I don't know why y'all be over here acting like that now. Why are y'all trying to get Coach Reed up out of here? So, you know what? I feel like, you know what? 75%, 75% of this is, is swack fellows that's be up in here starting miss that want her to leave. All right. Uh, okay. You should know, Mr. Moore, it's the... It's the flight that they use in the SWAT. You don't know that one? All right. And, okay, so I made this point. I said every time I read something citing JT Keith on the Clarion Ledger, speaking on anything Jackson State related, I cringe. And here he go. Thanks for the love and shade. No problem, Mr. Keith. You know I'm going to keep you on your toes. So it looks like Mr. Mr. Keith found, uh, looks like he found my page because I definitely been throwing shade. I'm going to make sure I follow him so that I can um, at him every time I call him out. Um, he's the HBCU sports editor. This is this is a diversity. This is what we call a DEI, a B S E diversity fellowship graduate. He's what we call a DEI. <laughs> Lord, they got the DEIs over here covering HBCU sports. Lord have mercy. Anyway, I called him out though. Um, but that was just because, you know. Whenever he speaks on Jackson State, sometimes he be leaving stuff to the for interpretation. And when you leave things for interpretation from like folks who are not affiliated, well, you know what? It, I don't even think at this point folks just be ignorant on purpose because these folks know that um, there's always a base pay that is paid, and then the rest comes from donors and outside sources. So it's not like they don't know that, but they just are, you know, blatantly obtuse. So Coach Reed said, whoo, Lord, I thank you. And folks was like, what is going on? What does that mean? What do you mean she thinks she's thanking the Lord because she's going somewhere else? She thanking the Lord because she's staying? What does that mean? What does it mean? And folks just been all on her page trying to figure it out. What does she mean by that? I, you know, I was the first one to comment. I'm all up on her page too. Because I want to know what that means. <laughs> what are we doing? What's the T? What's going on? Some folks got her crystal ball to Tennessee. Some folks had her crystal ball to Tulane. <clears throat> and, okay, you know Dre, he's going to keep it per usual. Pray for Coach Reed, y'all. She's not going to be able to tweet nothing over the next couple of days without people reading into it. And this is the thing. This is the thing that you don't. So if you watched Ken Clark's interview, or not Ken Clark, I'm excuse me, KC 1400 Media, if you go actually watch her interview, 
she doesn't necessarily leave anything up for the imagination. Not to me, she doesn't. She was very direct in telling us who's coming back. She's talking in the future. She's talking about the future in the state of Jackson State Athletics. She said, we need to sell 500, uh, 500 season tickets. She talked about who was returning. Adriana Avid is returning. Daphne White is returning. Haley Breeland is returning. Bolt Tion Bowler is returning. Well, shoot, you already got you still with them four returning. You about ready to run the swag again, run straight through the tournament, and we going. To where the rings reside, where the rings reside, where the rings reside. And I'm sure she's in communication with her recruits, right? Matter of fact, the portal don't open up till April 15th. So until she's until she's not. Until she's not, she's still at Jackson State on Jackson State payroll. And we going where the rings reside, where the rings reside, where the rings reside, where the rings reside. Hey, listen, it's Coach Reed at Jackson State. If you want to be a part of something special, come join us at Jackson State University. And that's on who? Mary. Hey, a little lamb. What the rings is I? 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 And we going. Drop some rings in the chat. Rings in the chat. What the rings is I? What the rings is I? What the rings is I? Hey, listen. It's Coach Reed at Jackson State. If you want to be a part of something special, come join us at Jackson State University. And that's on who. Mary had a little lamb. lamb. What a rings is I. 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 So many rings I can't see. So many rings I can't see. <laughs> and this is before she got her two rings from this season. That's a lot of rings. That's a lot of rings. I'm not trying to steal nobody's players, but uh, come on over to here to be. You want to win a ring, come to Jackson State. Did you hear what she said? She said, Bowler is coming back. She said, Daphne White is coming back. Um, she talked about a uh, freshman, Brinkley, who I think she had tore her meniscus during um, summer camp, but she's coming back. Haley Breland's back. So I would, everybody just, you know, go watch that interview because she even said herself, she said, me and Ashley, we were on contract. Y'all was on what? We were on contract. I couldn't find it. I know it's in there, but I didn't have enough time to clip that part. But it is in that interview um, at KC1400. I dropped it in the chat, and she said we were on contract. So what does that mean? So that dispels the myth that Jackson State hasn't been actively working with Coach Reed on a contract. Right. And um I remember when I had the opportunity to ask Coach Reed um at the NCAA tournament 
in Connecticut, I asked her about knocking down walls and she was speaking about her mission and she was talking about HBCUs. And portal season is approaching. Portal season is approaching, but I, the only two Jackson State players that I saw enter into the portal have not been on the team for quite some time. Um, and that was Maya Pratcher and Taylor Woodhouse. Those were the only two players that I saw thus far as entering uh, the portal. And they haven't been on the team for quite some time. So I, for me, I feel like, yeah. All right. So now one thing that Coach Reed did say uh, that she wanted on that lot li um live everything that she wants she lays it out you there's no room for error right we don't have necessarily room for misinterpretation because she lays it all out and she tells you what it is that she's expecting she said that she wants raises for her coaches she wants uh nil for her girls and she wants for 500 se season tickets to be sold, attendance, support of the program. So I've done this before, but uh, just because of the, t the sensitive time that we're in, I'm going to do it again, right? Um. Not Coach Green over here. Coach Green is um, in the chat like there's some recruits in the chat. How many rings do you have, Mr. Coach Green? He wants to um, basically, he's trying to get some recruits over at his place. All right, so we're going to go through these coaches again because she's requesting uh, for raises for her coaches. And then after that, I'm going to drop the stream yard. I want y'all to come up and discuss it with me, and that's how we're going to end the show. Um, so... This is Coach Campbell. He joined the program in the fall of 2021. He was serving as the head men's basketball coach at Wiley College. And that was his for 10 years, for 10 years in the 10th season of his coaching career. What? Was he at Wiley College for 10 years? That's up for interpretation. It says he was the head men's basketball coach at Wiley College in the 10th season of his coaching career. So I think maybe he had 10 years of coaching underneath his belt. And at that point in time that he decided to come to Jackson State, he was coaching at Wiley College. Campbell spent two seasons at Tuskegee University as an assistant coach. He helped the Tigers finish in the top 10 of the National College Athletic Association in scoring defense and the top five in Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference in three-pointers made per game free throw percentage, field goal percentage, and three-point percentage. Campbell was responsible for scouting, recruiting, managing the budget, game planning, and late-game situations. What do we know about late-game situations? Sheesh, did y'all see that game with Southern? I'm glad I only watched half of it. I came in at halftime, okay, because – Y'all know how I get on these games. If I would have had to watch that Southern game through its entirety, I would have probably had a heart attack because we were – I didn't even know what the score was before I turned the game on. I was like, what? That was a game – that was probably uh, one of the best comebacks that I've ever seen um, in college basketball, right? Um. Before Tuskegee, he spent one season as an assistant coach at Benedict College. His team was second in conference in scoring defense and fourth in field goal percentage. He helped guide them to the SIAC semifinals. Campbell spent three seasons at his alma mater, Payne College. 
serving as an interim head coach in 2015 to 2016, guiding it to the second best scoring offense in the SIAC. So um, in 2014 to 15 as an assistant, he helped Payne College to the regular season SIAC title, title with a 23-6 overall record and 18-3 and in conference play. In 11 seasons, Kimball has coached 13 all-conference athletes, including two players of the year. So this is why she wants to make sure that she um, locks in her coaches. And Dragon 1998, he keeps, uh, you keep posting FBS teams. Can you post some FCS teams and what they're paying their coaches? It's kind of apples to oranges when you uh, compare FBS to FCS when it comes to coaching salaries. Right? Now, you know Coach Reed Coach Reed has an amazing coaching staff. Absolutely. Manny's and petties. Right. So we need to get a um, NIL deal going with one of these local um, Manny and petty spots. All right. Let's go to <clears throat> LaShonda. Coach Cousin. All right. She's the recruiting coordinator, assistant coach. She enters her fifth year um, in the Jackson State women's basketball program. So this is probably a little bit old. So it's not, I think this is probably her sixth year, maybe. Or maybe her seventh. Because some of these, uh, her, like the biographies on the website are a little outdated. So she's been instrumental in the success of the program, playing an integral part in three consecutive SWAC regular seasons titles, two SWAC tournament championships, and back-to-back -back trips to the NCAA tournament. Uh, during this time, the program has had six student athletes earning first team all swag honors three named to the second team producing both a WNBA draft pick Amisha Williams holiday and a U.S. Olympian Alexis Roberts in the deaf Olympics in the classroom the program has a cumulative 3.0 3.08 GPA during the past season cousin earned her master's of science in sports science after her time as a graduate assistant from Jackson State before JSU she played collegiate basketball at Meridian Community College where she earned her Associate of Arts and Sciences before transferring to Mississippi State University where she earned a bachelor's degree in criminology. And cousin is the proud mother of, I don't know if that's Amari or Amory. All right, let's go to the next coach. And then let me drop the stream yard. So we're going to talk about some openings because there still is a couple of, of openings and Tennessee is one of them. So because the the men's games are going to be on Monday and the women's games are going to be on Thursday, so they will be separate. So, yes, those will be separate. All right. And so this is why um, she's also requesting for races for her coaches, okay? 
got to keep your coaches. Coach Williams, he's a native of Wiggins, Mississippi. Um, so it looks like he's had a monumental impact, especially on recruitment. Okay. So we all know that the player that is from Wiggins, Mississippi is Haley Breland. That's Mr. Campbell's cousin, distant cousin, is Haley Breland. And um, she's from Wiggins, Mississippi. All right. So, mind you, all of with the majority, the majority of these young ladies are natives of the state of Mississippi. So we have some ballers in Mississippi. Shout out to the other girls on the team, but we do have a base of young girls, and they are from the state of Mississippi. Um, so Coach Williams. Uh, was named an assistant coach at Jackson State University in the fall of 2021. He's been instrumental in the program's success, playing an integral part as the team has won its third consecutive SWAC regular season title. So this is a little bit outdated. So it should actually be, what, its fifth SWAC regular season title? And the 2022 SWAT Tournament Championship made a trip to the 2022 NCAA Tournament. The JSU Women's Basketball Program has one student athlete earn first team all SWAC honors. Two players have earned all SWAC Tournament awards and another named the second team. Under the direction of head coach Tamika Reed, Williams has also assisted in producing both a WNBA draft pick, Amisha williams Holiday and a U.S. Olympian, Alexis Roberts, who won a gold medal in the Deaf Olympics. Williams' success as part of the JSU coaching staff continues as the Tigers went undefeated in 2022 in SWAC play. As you know, in 2024, they also went undefeated in SWAC play. Be before coaching at Jackson State, Williams served as the associate head coach at Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College in Perkinson, Mississippi. Williams helped guide the Williams basketball program to 40 wins in three seasons, two Mississippi Association of Community College Conferences, and two National Junior College Athletics Association Region 23 appearances. In 2020, the Bulldogs were NJCAA Region 23 semifinalists as they completed a 17-win season, the best since 2014, and the first back-to-back Region 23 appearance since 2012 to 2013. Under Bulldogs head coach Hope Adams, William assisted the development of 15 four-year college signees. Among those eight athletes was Daphne White, a 6'5 Mississippi State University transferred McDonald's All-American nominee and five-star nationally ranked player. So Daphne White was coached underneath uh, Williams, and he, she ended up coming to Jackson State, as we all know. <laughs> Williams also assisted with the guard development of Brianna McCullough, Kayla Simmons, Dandy does an honorable mention. Williams played a huge role in rebuilding the program's brand and recruiting efforts led by signing a five-star nationally ranked player and two Mississippi Danny Dozen selections. During Williams' tenure at MGCCC under Coach Adams, the teams posted an overall team grade point average of 3.16, which led to over two. Prior to MGCCC, Williams returned to his alma mater to begin his coaching career as the Stone High School assistant boys basketball coach. During his three years there, the team won 65 games and a Region 8 5A championship. Stone High School 23-5, Region 8 5A championships played in the MH 
SAA semifinal championship game in Jackson, Mississippi, but fell to Callaway High School in the matchup. Um, so it says Williams owns elite skills basketball training, an intense basketball skills program designed to maximize potential and develop ta talent through elite skills. Williams trains professional, college, high school, and amateur basketball players. Elite skills training started in South Mississippi and has since expanded rapidly. Williams earned his bachelor's degree in business administration from Faulkner University and his master's in business administration from William Carey. He has a son, Cortez Dennis, who plays basketball at Pearl River Community College. So there we go. That's the coaching staff. So you have Coach Williams. And that's one of the things that she, Coach Cousin and Coach Campbell, that's one of the things she requested, which was an increase. Listen, we don't want to be out here like these snakes. How are you going to face it? You done messed me up, but y'all look busy. I done called the police because I'm doing a refund. A refund is due unto me. Don't feel like I just been abused out here today. God ain't blue like this. You can't do the same thing like this. Boys, I don't even know what I'm going to say. I done tell the police to blue. I'm going to say it ain't none of my last call. I'm doing Y'all can't do us like that, okay? We are not trying to be out here like fam you. How you gonna fix it? Buy them season tickets. How you gonna fix it? Donate to Jackson State Women's Basketball. How you gonna fix it? Fill up the AAC. How you gonna fix it? <laughs> no, for real. This is serious, y'all. We need to have a, another celebration or something. And yeah. How y'all gonna fix it? She, she told y'all how to fix it now. She told y'all how to fix it. We need to have some pedicures and manicures for the whole uh, team. She said they need about 2500 to stop the nutrition. And KC1400, they have an initiative. The Blue Bangle. If you would like to make a donation to the Blue Bangle. How you gonna fix it? Shoo. Go buy a, a gift certificate to the, um, or a gift card to one of these little food places. Whether it's Stamps or Johnny T's or Raisin Cane's. And drop them off with the AD so that he can... Make sure that the girls get their uh, 
little gift cards, you know? There's some ways to fix it. Okay. I don't know. I like the raffle idea. I like a raffle. A raffle, a, a lunch, lunch date with Coach Tamika Reed, and you get the raffle. I like that idea. Do we need to do, do we need to put up some bundles? Where's Uncle Bundles at? So how are we going to? All right, now I'm getting ready to bring up some news, y'all. Yeah, I don't know if y'all want to hear this or not, but we're going to have to talk about it. <clears throat> so the news about Coach Reed and she interviewed with Tulane that came out one day ago crazy right it came out one day ago which means you know what that means that means she been interviewed with them I mean I wasn't necessarily stalking coach Reed but I know that she was in Gulfport Mississippi this past weekend for Easter weekend. Well, she was on her story. I wasn't trying to stalk her or nothing like that, you know. So this interview had to take place maybe sometime last week, right? And they just now came out with the information. So that, you know what that means? When they come out with it, with this right here, that means that, because they announced today the, uh, the new coach, right? So that means that she had already interviewed with them. I'm thinking between, when do y'all think it? We don't even know when she interviewed with them. For all we know, she could have interviewed with them two weeks ago. Could have happened a long time ago. I mean, her contract was getting ready to be up for. Like, she knew her contract was ending. And I don't know about you, but if my contract's getting ready to end, and I know that I'm on the bargaining side, which means I've had a good enough run to where I can be bargaining. I would went and did a couple of interviews too. There's a lot of folks that actually go on interviews that don't plan on going nowhere. They just want to see, they just want to see where they're at. So what I'm saying is she didn't do it. She, what I'm saying is that this particular interview could have taken place at any given time, but based on how quickly they chose the uh, coach, then maybe it took place last week sometime. <clears throat> Tulane interviews Jackson State coach Tamika Reed for open women's basketball program. This came up. This came out yesterday. And it talks about Tulane Athletic Director David Harris spoke about 
what he was looking for in his next coach at Stockton's farewell news conference. He said he wants to hire a proven winner with the integrity to win the right way like Stockton did. Reed has ties to New Orleans, having previously served as recruiting coordinator at UNO. She also has been a recruiting coordinator at Louisiana Tech, UL, and Southern Miss. Um, So it just basically talked about her accolades, um, going to the NCAA tournament three times in 2021, 2022, and 2024. They did miss the WNIT that she went to in 2023. She has a overall SWAC um, record of 83-4. So, Hey, Doc. What's going on? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> oh, man. Everybody just be patient. <laughs> she going to, you know. Yeah, we're just talking about, um, we're just sharing. So then today, It says Tulane has chosen one of its former greats as its new women's basketball coach. See, the thing about PWIs and coaching searches is they usually are real quick when it comes to coaching replacements. They've already got like a short list, right? But they do their interviews quickly. You're not going to see something open for that long. The um, That Tulane job, when did she say she wanted to retire? I wanted to say they've been knowing about uh, the Tulane coach leaving. Um, what do you think about Tulane and its recruiting efforts? Like, are they able to recruit? Well, well, you know, Tulane is you know Tulane is a private institution, right? Mm-hmm. But they still want to go ahead and get that. Uh, um New Orleans, Baton Rouge in that in that market, the Gulf Coast on Mississippi. Uh that's their footprint. So they want to kind of get a bead on that. And then, you know, I, I'm not gonna say anything bad about Coach Coach Langford because she won when she was at Stony Brook. You know, she took Stony Brook as a I don't even know what their record was before she became the head coach. But they was 20, 20, what, 25 and three, and they went to the NCAA tournament and they won a comp and they won the C, uh, the C, I'm about to say CIAA. CAA. C, yeah. <laughs> CAA. <laughs> Y'all say that 10 times fast. But I mean, I think that was a good look. I think that was a good hire for them. Now, people going to speculate because, uh, Kelly Harper from Tennessee, uh, they let her go. Yeah, I think the other day. Well, and... I actually actually have a news article on that. So one mm-hmm. thing that I found interesting is I'm just now realizing this is the lady who they were cheering because they were up against South Carolina, and then South Carolina shot the three pointer to win, and she looked like she had egg on her face, and they gave her the boot immediately expeditiously so do you think she got fired just because based off of that game no she didn't get fired based off that game she got fired because tennessee women's basketball hasn't been the same since past summer had uh since she stepped down and then of course she passed away you know past summer had alzheimer's yeah she had alzheimer's disease so it ain't been the same since she was since that woman been alive because <laughs> when you talk about Tennessee women's basketball, the first person you going to, the first person that going to come to mind is going to be coach summit. They try to relive them, them years where coach summit took that team and they won, I think eight or nine national championships. Kind of like Gremlin. Uh, you talking about as far and as like, Eddie Robinson? And Eddie how Robinson. they want to re- relive those years? They be just a person yeah. does bad. They just they don't let nobody build nothing. 
like yeah, that. You got to let it build. Like, so the thing about this, like, let's say Coach, R, uh, Coach Gino, right? He been at UConn for for forty years. Been been, been there longer than I've been alive. Right. <laughs> he been there long. He been at the same amount of, as my, you know, as me. I'm forty four, but he built that program from the ground up, and he just he just like you said last week. He has a system. It works, and he knows what he's doing. You know. It ain't his fault that he won 11 national championships. It ain't his fault that he won, I think, what, 100, like almost not, a little bit over 90 games in a row. And and he he he's the only one to do back-to-back-to-back to back to back, uh, a four-peat. Okay. So folks in the chat are saying Tennessee is not hiring a black coach. Okay, so maybe she's okay, so but but we're still gonna read it. Even though they said that they're not, we're still gonna read it. Oh. How did that happen? I'm, I'm gonna put it like this. They say Tennessee ain't hiring a black coach. I, I'm gonna say it like this. Tennessee ain't hiring a black coach. I bet you this. If Tamika catches put her name up in the hat, they'll hire her. All right. If Shamika Hulk put her name in a the hat, they were hire her with the quickness. Cause that's to me, well, that's Tennessee royalty right there. Well, this is Lady Vols basketball coaching candidates, 11 options to replace Kelly Harper. And this is Cora Hall. Um, here's who they have in mind. She Kelly Harper was fired after five seasons. Here are candidates to monitor through the Lady Bull search. Notre Dame fighting Irish head coach Neil Ivey displays the tournament net after defeating the North Carolina State Wolfpack at Greensboro Coliseum. Southern Cal's Trojans head coach Lindsey Gottlieb is that how you say her name? Louisville, Louisville, Jeff Walls. Oregon State Beavers head coach, Scott Rook. UCL Bruins head coach, Corey Close. Boy, she was going in at that game. The LSU game versus UCLA. I have never seen a coach be able to yell and scream like that without getting a technical. Um, Colorado basketball coach J.R. Payne. South Bend, Indiana, Old Miss Rebels head coach Yolette McPhee McCune. Head coach Kara Lawson of the Duke Blue Devils. She would be the best, she would be the most available person right there, Kara Lawson. Jackson State Lady Tigers head coach Tamika Reed watches from the sideline as they take on UConn Huskies at Harry A. Gamble Pavilion. Oklahoma head coach, women's basketball coach Jenny Baranzik. And Vanderbilt basketball coach Shia Ralph. Um, so those are the... coaches that they have and lo and behold they do have coach reed's name in this particular coaching search at tennessee um reed has a 99 to 447 record in five seasons and the tigers won five straight swap regular seasons titles three swap tournament titles to earn ncaa tournament berths in 2001 2022 and 2024 Jackson State impressed in its last two tournament runs and came close to upsetting LSU in 2022. The Tigers fell to UConn in the first round this year, but Reed drew praise from Huskies coach Gino. Coach Gino. Reed consistently schedules tough for her team and plays against Power 5 competition. Coaching in the SEC would be a jump for Reed, but she has proven she can coach. So this is the thing. Reed has an interesting 
candidate give Reed is an interesting candidate given her contract, which pays her approximately one thirty five one hundred thirty five thousand per year. Which that's not how much she makes because once again, as we talk, that's her base, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What What is that noise? Oh, I'm a, I'm I'm on my last break, y'all. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Look, I'm on my break. I'm chilling. <laughs> Oh, it sounds like you moving something. Oh, uh, no. Nah. Catching my breath. That's about it. <laughs> it says, once again, I've been to Knoxville. No brothers or sisters, sisters, just a couple. They said there ain't no black folks in Knoxville. It's black people in Knoxville, bro. That's, he said, "If you the difference between going there and actually living there, there's pe there's black people in Knoxville." They said it ain't no DEIs up in Knoxville. How you gonna fix it? <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to mute Doc for a little bit because it sounds like something. I don't know what that noise is. Uh oh, Lord. Folks in the chat are saying that Coach Reed might be able to bring the Pat Summit magic back. What do you think about that, Doc? Well, bring her back to Pat Summit magic. She can bring Pat. She, she can be bring Pat Summit magic. She can do whatever that magic is at Jackson State. That's a whole like Pat Summit was a whole lot of cussing, but she was a whole lot of love. she was just, Pat Summit. And Tamika Reed and Coach Reed are pretty much almost one and the same because she treats her players like that. You know what I'm saying? They are her kids. Pat Summer never had, she didn't have girls. She had, she had a boy. And the her whole basketball team, she treated them like they were her daughters. Hey, Mr. Ford. Hey, how you doing? What's Mr. going on, Mr. Ford? Ford? What's going on? You need to help doing? us. We, you know, Coach Reed, she's up for for her contract renewal, and yeah. she might be going somewhere else. And we need to know, Mr. Ford. How you gonna fix it? I read something you. about her going to uh, interviewing at Tulane. Did was that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I, I I remember seeing it on the National Wire that uh, she was gonna that they was calling her a free agent or something. They said she was a free agent. Yeah, technically they say she's a free agent. And technically she is a free agent. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that, but I had no, uh, you know. Uh, so, so what? What's the latest? It, it, did she sign a contract so, with Jackson? So Tulane, so Tulane uh -huh. is hired their coach today. Okay, so they hired somebody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they hired oh. um, Ashley Langford from uh, Stony Brook. Oh, okay, okay. She's okay. from. She's a former Tulane player. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I mean, Stony Brook is FCS. Well, when it comes to basketball, it don't Everybody's matter. Division yeah, one. Everybody's yeah. Division one. one. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they Stony are Brook is New York, right? One, Isn't that New the, York? But the, the pace, yes, that's the New pay York. scale is New York, different. Yeah. Yeah, the I pay think scale is different. Y'all over oh, here yeah. talking about it's all division one, but the pay scale is not. Well, Tulane, is, it, well, the culture, well, Tulane is considered uh, a mid major, just like we are. So yeah, now they're they're from uh, isn't it the a AAC? Tulane pays about the last time I checked when I was the last show that I did, I talked about Tulane and I looked up how much the coach was making. The coach was making around five hundred thousand at Tulane. Yeah, yeah, that's a you know Tulane. Uh, isn't it isn't that the school with the highest number of billionaires on in the alumni or something? So I she know they got a, they got a, more than five hundred thousand, but her yeah, it's a it's a rich school. I know it's see it, it uh, Tulane competes against Duke for the for the kids. They compete against Duke, Vanderbilt, Tulane, and in Atlanta it's Emory University. All of them so, compete for the same kids. So when I was doing um, 
some research and and they were talking about Tulane, they were saying that sometimes the the recruiting efforts can be dampered because Tulane is a private institution, right? And then they have certain types of stipulations for their uh, like admitting. Yeah. Kind of like when you have the Ivy League. Um, yeah. Programs That's what it that is. It's, yeah. it's harder to get certain types of recruits. Right. Right. Because, like you said, it's kind of like the of Ivy League of the South, isn't it? Right. So yeah. you have. Um, sometimes you can get your recruiting can be efforts can be dampered a little bit by the fact that you're not going to get access to all of the recruits simply because um, of their admissions process or grades and stuff like that. Um, So then we just looked at her name being dropped in the hat for Knox for Tennessee. Folks are saying that. They got that. Yeah. They let that coach go. Right. Mm-hmm. Sure did. Yeah, yeah. Harper, I think her name was Harper or something. Right. Yep. Went yeah. ahead and gave her the boot. She was. How many years was she there? Five, Five years. years. Well, they might as well go on and come to the fact that you you don't get a pet summit every five years. I'm telling you, that lady was an institution up there, man. She was something else. I'm gonna tell you what. I'm gonna tell you this with with the Tennessee with that Tennessee job. The first person they're gonna call is Kara Lawson. She's over oh, at yeah. Duke. She's, she's at Duke. A, she's at Duke and she's a yeah. Tennessee legend. Yeah, that's right. I remember Kara Lawson. Yeah, I remember when she worked for ESPN. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, she was a point guard, wasn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember her. Yeah, you're right. She might be the first one they call. Yeah, because yeah. she was on the team and she was on that squad with it was her, Kelly Jolly. Well, yeah, that's Jolly is actually Kelly Harper. She okay. got married, so okay. it was the it was her. Also, Shamika Holsclaw. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, uh, I remember uh, that. Clip. Tamika Catchins and uh, what's the girl's name? Last name Snow. Uh, uh, was that the real tall girl? Yeah, she was six yeah. five. That's right, I remember her because she uh-huh. went in the WNBA. Yeah, all actually all of them went to the WNBA. Right, that's right. I remember her. I remember the Snow girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. Michelle. Sorry, somebody just said it. Michelle Snow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember them. That, that that was a super team, man. And also the 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 former head coach of FAMU women's team, let the ones that they let go last season. She was on that squad too. Uh, uh, Pillow. She was on the actual squad too. So yeah. Yeah, I, I do. Hey, is this true? What? Mr. Carey saying right here? That's true? What's that? I didn't see what he, he said. He said, Mr. Ford, how do you feel about the SWAC basketball tournament being moved to Atlanta in 2025? Yes, that, Mr. Ford. That what do you is think true? About that? Yeah, what do you think I mean, about You know, I love, I love that. <laughs> now, where would, they, where would they have it at? Oh, you for me, it definitely have to be either Georgia Tech or Georgia State. Oh Lord! I'm gonna jump off, y'all. All right. All right. It, it, yeah, I would either go Georgia Tech or I'd go Georgia State. Look at you. So you when, when, did, when? I'm sorry. Listen, when did that news break? When did that come down? I don't know because the last time I talked to, um, last time when I talked to the, um commissioner at swag uh-huh. media day and i asked right. him he told me that birmingham the bills are already paid and right. that I remember that. every time they move it every time they move it they have to build a new base and it's not able to grow because they keep moving it everywhere they went to new orleans they went to texas somewhere so you know well, you know now, now you, Mister Mona. Now you know I've told, I've said this for years now. The number one place that that SWAC tournament should be in is Jackson, Mississippi. The number two place should be Baton Rouge, on the campus of Southern University. Uh, now you know I'm happy about them coming to Atlanta now. Now the only thing is, you know, I told you before. I, so, uh, I'm going to gonna put a pre- I'm going to preface it. Let me go ahead and preface it. This is alleged, and this is not alleged by She Loves Thee. 
This was oh, okay. bro this was broken down by Mr. Israel Carey. He said, check with the street committee, Mr. Fort, and they'll confirm it. Allegedly. Allegedly. Well, I gotta spy. check on that, man. That's ooh. Okay. All right. All right. Well, uh, you know I'm in love. If they come into Atlanta, that's gonna be great. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> Now, the only thing is, I want them brackets fixed right. <laughs> Please fix them brackets. Mr. Four, I don't know if you know, but women's basketball is on the up and up. Oh, without a doubt. You, you mean uh, around the, the country or you mean the SWAT? What, what, are you around talking about both? the country. Women, oh, yeah, they, without a doubt. Watching, Listen. They watching women's basketball yes, more they than are. they are the men's. That's right. I, I don't know. I'm waiting. To, I'm waiting to hear the numbers on that uh, Iowa uh, LSU game because I it know it's all of America. Nine million. It was twelve point oh, yeah. nine That's million. That's what I'm it was saying. More than NBA, it was more than any any of them. Right. Right. Okay. Because I watched it too. Matter of fact, after that game was over, I went to pay it. Oh, you didn't watch UConn versus USC? No, I, I didn't. I didn't get a chance to watch UConn, and I was I, after the. I, I'm sorry. I kind of had a feeling that they weren't going to. I was sick last night, so I only got to watch, I want to say, the first quarter. And then I was like, oh, I got to turn this off because my head was hurting. But right. um, Angel Reese, she uh -huh. hurt when she hurt her ankle. I knew it was right. going. I remember when she hurt her ankle. Yeah. She yeah. was going in. She And then I was like, well, I'm going to go to bed. And at first, um, Caitlin Clark was she was missing a lot of shots. I don't know what happened. She must have went and had her Wheaties or something. Yeah, I thought that I thought that I would just outplay them up first half. I, I mean, I, I was running the floor. I was just shocked about how I was running the floor. Uh, but I thought that LSU would make a run in the second half, which they did do, but. I would match them, you know, that they, they, they responded. Which I don't know why they didn't put Flage Johnson on Caitlin Clark, not uh, Van Lil. What? Oh, yeah. They, uh, yeah, I know. They should have put yeah. Flage on her or double teamed her or something. The right. double teaming was working, and she that's when she just became a super assister, but her other team wasn't shooting shots like that this uh -huh. particular game. So I think they should have mimicked the um, last game that they were in and double teamed her. But nevertheless, down goes LSU. Did you hear about Southern beating LSU? In, in baseball. In baseball? Yeah, I did hear that today. Yeah. Uh, and it happened, wasn't it yesterday? It happened on the same day. That's right. Yeah, I did hear about that. Yeah. So it was oh. it was just a good day all around for uh, for Swack. Oh yeah. With the ex with the exception of our um, coach possibly <laughs> leaving. Um, yeah. So. Well, let me just say this about Coach to make the read. I've fallen in love with her and her program. And I just want to let you know that whatever she decides to do, I support her 100% because uh, my sister's crazy about her. My sister actually knows her. I've never met her, but I've watched her from afar and I'm very impressed by her and I'm impressed by her program. And wherever she goes, whatever she does, I'm going to uh, be one of her followers. Uh, I would definitely be following her wherever she goes. If she stays at Jackson, I'll continue to follow whatever she decides to do. I'm 100% behind her because I think she's a class act. I really do. Amen. Mr. Ford, you know mm -hmm. that she's not the only, that's not the only coach that we have that could possibly be leaving. You know that, right? Well, not. No, me. I didn't. But we no, this, in the no. SWAC, we still have uh, Alabama A and M. They haven't named a coach yet. 
a coach unless I miss something. Is that Did girls, I miss is something? That women's basketball? Yes. Is, Have you ever noticed how quickly? Yes, yes. We still don't. They still don't have a coach. I'm surprised. That's uh, in that uh, Paul, Brian. What, what's AD's name at uh, uh, A and M? Isn't name Brian? That was um, that was Margaret Richards. Okay, now Paul, who's yeah, the AD? Paul, or, Paul Bryant. Paul Bryant. I'm surprised at him because he's he's to me he's uh he seems to be always on the ball. But have you ever noticed that like the PWI coaching positions don't whenever they fire somebody or somebody retires, if this is not open for that long, it's like less than a week and a half, maybe two at the most. Yeah, because you know what they say that is that as an AD, at all times you're supposed to have four candidates uh, that you can call on to take the job when if your coach leaves or you decide to get rid of them, you're supposed to have four names automatically on your Rolodex that you can go to immediately and say, look, I want to offer you this job. That's Now, that's what I've always heard about ADs. They always, you know, got a list of four that they can go to at any time. Mm. So I'm kind of surprised. because Now, he's an experienced AD, I think. Brian is, isn't he? he, he and he worked, and he's been an AD for, for some years. Hey, you Alabama and M people, how, in, is he Dr. Bryant or he's Mr. Bryant? Is he Dr. Bryant? I'll look him up. He's doctor. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, 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 I'm surprised. I, I was I was thinking that he would have, you know, I don't know. He's been there since 2022. Right. Um, now, was he at Grambling at one time? Wasn't it? Was he at Grambling? Uh, let me see. I, I you want to read his bio? It's interesting. You know I do. You know I love bios. Now you know I want to hear you. Now you, Miss Simona, you know me. All right, Doctor Paul Bryant was named Alabama A and M Director of Athletics on August twentieth, two thousand twenty-two. Uh -huh. He's also someone who's extremely familiar with the culture of HBCUs, having right. led four such departments over the course of eight years. He's just the fourth full-time AD in the program's 24-year NCAA Division I history. Wow. So Alabama A&M keeps their ADs. Yeah. Over the past two years, Brian has led the charge to have NCAA sanctions removed after a five-year probationary period and oversaw the change from having nine teams on NCAA APR restrictions to only through to only through with one within one year. What? I don't know what that meant. I think that was a mistake. Something okay. something regarding he was getting I didn't even know they had those types of restrictions over there at Alabama AM, but he got them off of it. What they APR yeah. or what did they have? Um, yeah, NCAA APR. APR? Okay, okay. Um, it says, under Brian's leadership, Alabama A&M basketball attendance rose from an average of 1,576 fans during the 2022 uh -huh. to 2023 season to 2,871. Uh -huh. Shoot, we need to call him and say, hey, what y'all over there doing? What y'all over there doing? Um, basketball and football broke single game attendance records at Alabama A&M. The oh, men's yeah. basketball program set a single game mark of 6,389 against rival Alabama State. Right. While the pro women's program also set that mark against Alabama State at 5,127. Wow. Uh -huh. So it looks like he was the associate vice president for intercollegiate athletics at Edward Waters. Right. And and at Gramlin from 2016 right. to 2018. That's, um, yeah. And then at South Carolina State. Yeah, that's right. I remember he was at South Carolina State. Yeah. Stillman, yeah. Eureka, Urbana. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, listen, he, he can make a home run hire because I'm going to tell you now, there's some good people available. Some good people available out there now. 
Uh, and they got a brand new arena. Somebody just said it right here about that new arena. I've seen it virtually. That arena is awesome. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It says, got to look at the big, huh, not folks over here naming coaches. What What do they say? They over here trying to name coaches. I don't, I'm not getting ready to name. No, um, I'm not getting ready um, to name any replacements for Coach Reed at this time. I will say that her base contract, I confirmed from a um, source that, Asked to remain anonymous, uh -huh. that her base contract is two hundred and fifty thousand per year. Offer the offer, the contract offer is two hundred and fifty thousand per year for four years. That that's at Jackson. Yes, that's what Coach oh. Reed has been offered. Okay, okay, uh -huh. okay. Allegedly. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's just so that should be putting her maybe around four hundred thousand, probably. Because you know oh. she gets a supplement. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. She she really asked for her coaches to be taken care of and her girls to be taken care of and increase in attendance and support. That's what she asked for. Right. Right. Okay. I think she'll get. I think she'll get what she is asking for. I think she'll get it. Now, how, how many how many girls how many seniors were on that well how many girls are leaving do, do you have an idea of that leaving where jackson i'm saying how many seniors did you have on the team this year oh i thought you was talking about like they was getting in the con in the in the portal or something no no i'm saying how many seniors did you lose okay it, let's go look at it so this is what coach Reed said, did you have a chance to watch KC 1400? You know that they interviewed her last Wednesday. No, I, I'm sorry. I missed it. Okay. So this is what I'm going to pull up the roster, but okay. this is who she said is returning. She said, Adriana Avent is returning. Uh -huh. She said, Tion Bowler is returning. Right. Daphne White is returning. Okay. And Haley Breland. Those are the main ones that are returning. And oh, the, all those people were starters? Uh, Daphne Tion was she only named prominent players, but Adriana Avent would have been starting. She just uh -huh. came up off the bench. She was putting up 19, 20 points a game. Oh, yeah. That's off the bench. Player. Okay. All yeah. right. So let me look at this. So Maya is gone. She's graduating. She played her okay. last year. Okay. Uh, Layla Walker should still be there. Kashana Luckett is graduating. Madison Rochelle should still be there. Right. Uh, Angel Jackson is gone. I think Michaela Woods is gone because it has her as a graduate student. Ariana Hunter, I don't... It says junior in her bio. Um, Zakia Mahoney, that was her last year. Okay. Um, Caitlin Br Brinkley, that's the 6'2 uh, forward. She was, uh, she was basically one of the only freshmen... Um, players that Coach Reed took into the program because she said that they calculate differently now. Um, your freshman players, like your freshman players, have to go through all four years or it's counted against the program. Um, so, but she also says she's doing some recruiting. But okay. for her okay. to be able to bring back Bowler. Avent and Daphne White 
and uh, Haley Breland just as a starting point, that's pretty good. She's not necessarily starting all the way over with her recruit. Okay. Okay. But she does very well with her recruiting. I mean, you know, her teams are always championship caliber, you know, so she does well with her recruiting. Right. So well, let me ask, let me ask you this question again, since it's no question Jackson State has the number one women's basketball program in them in the SWAC. Who's number two? <laughs> oh, Lord. Who's number two, Miss Tamona? Too many of them hopped up in the portal. I was hoping you was gonna say Grambling. Oh yeah. Would yeah. you would you think we number two? Yeah, Gremlin's good. Gremlin's Gremlin's definitely a contender. Yeah, we, we did. Now, how and far I didn't did we see, get in the I tournament? See, did we get? I didn't see. T I didn't see too many. Uh, I didn't see too many of the Gremlin girls hopping in the portal. No, I haven't Gremlin heard anything and, either. Gremlin and that. Jackson State are basically the only two. Everywhere else, it's a wild, wild west. Now, what, so what about got, that? Um, got, the, women got past the the um, second round, and then once they got okay. to ULM, you know it wasn't going to be a fair fight. Now, now who put who put uh, Grambling out of the SWAC tournament? Girls. That was Alcorn. Alcorn, that's right. Okay. Now let me ask you, how about Southern? I, I, what do you think about Southern's program? Are they at number three? You think they're number two or number three? Uh-oh, they said Jazzy Munn from Gramlin is in the portal. Okay, is that is is that was that a starter or was that I mean, was it a significant player? Dang. Why they um I don't know. You gotta trust the process. You know what? Sometimes these girls, for whatever reason, they hop up in that portal. I know North Carolina A and T had one of their ladies hop in the portal, and they made it to the Sweet Sixteen of the WNIT. Yeah, yeah, they did. You know what? They they, they did. They went, they you know what? We we need to give them a hand clap of praise because A and T's did well. They did well. They did well. You know, as much as I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just toe up with A&T. I, you know, I still hadn't got over the fact that they not in the MIAC. You know me now. I'm still mad about it. Yeah. You know, still, I, I know what I'm going to let it go. So I got it. Jackson State, Grambling Southern, Alcorn, and UAPB, but... Now UAPB done had so many folks hop up in that portal and Alabama A and M, they just done exploded. So so how many girls from UAPB left? I mean went into the portal. I want to say at least four. Let me go to was, um, it, was that big scorer? did she leave? I no no, I didn't see Zay in there, but I seen okay. Maya Pete in there. I wanna say um It was a lot. I was like, dang. Yeah, because she, she uh, that's uh, Coach Don, what's Coach's last name? Thornton. Thornton, yeah. Coach, Coach had a pretty, now what, what did she end up, I mean, where did, I'm sorry, where did she end up regular season? What, what place was UAP be? Okay, let's I go mean, look at the SWAC standings. Yeah, yeah. Where did she, where did she end up? Because I think they had a pretty good year, didn't they? I mean, they did have a good year, but it seemed like everything. She ended up fourth. Oh shit! And, and what was what was the what was the conference record? So Jackson State was eighteen and zero in conference. Okay, right. Gremlin State was fifteen and three. Ooh. Southern was thirteen and five. Ooh. And then Arkansas Pine Bluff was eleven and seven. Okay. Alabama A and M was ten and eight. Wait a minute. 
And they fired their coach? I don't think she they fired her. I think she decided oh. to step away. Okay, she's okay. All right. Okay. Okay. They over there telling her to Zay Green hasn't hopped up in the portal yet. So I, this is the only thing. I need some allegedly in the chat again. So uh, uh, because this is this is the thing that you have to look at. So for Alabama A and M, their coach just left. So it's understandable why you have all these players getting into the portal. From from Alabama A and M, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So you, it's understandable while they're getting in there. Now, what is kind of like the UAPB ladies could be in the portal because they want to be flexible if Coach Thornton leaves. Yeah, I just, I just saw that. Yeah. Allegedly. Zay oh, Green yeah. did go to the portal. Since when? I didn't see her in there. I didn't see her in there. But we now, have now. Zay Green is the big scorer. That's that's yes, the big time yes. scorer. Okay. We had the the WNBA scouts at, at her practice and stuff like that. I'll tell right. you, there's been a lot of folks hopping up in the portal though. Like, I was just like, good lord. Yeah, we know it's a. Um, it's almost like having to recruit all over again. When you have it like that, it's hard to rebuild, right? So my thing is, are you guys going to another a group of five? Or I know they say that all basketball is the same, but um, in the grand scheme of things, like, are you trying to go to a place where you think you're going to get an NIL deal, or are you trying to like, what are you trying to do? Yeah, that you know, hey. So this is Jazzy. After careful consideration for this from from Gramlin, she hopped up in the portal. So she went into the transfer portal. It doesn't say how many years she has left. And this is somebody from Gramlin. That's one of their main starters. Right, right. Was she a guard or forward? Or what was what, what Jasmine she? Jackson? A guard, I think. I want to say, okay, yeah, I remember that guard. Yeah, okay, yeah. So it's a lot of folks that, uh, you know, they're moving around, right? And that they think that they're doing what's best for them. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, she's a sophomore, yeah. she's a sophomore guard, and she averaged. Eight points per game. Yeah, I saw them play on HBCU Go. I think I saw them play Southern. They they look very impressive. I saw Gramlin's girls against uh, Southern. I was I was impressed with. I was impressed with that coach too. So for me, it's kind of like, mm, so if you're right there, do you want to leave when you're right there? Right, because yeah. Gramlin was right there, right? 15 and three yeah. in her first year three. was crazy, crazy numbers, right? Yeah. I mean, did you notice Jackson State? They emptied out their, they emptied out their uh roster as well on the men's side. Hey, now, like uh, 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 Gramlin's coach, is she a Southern graduate? Somebody is is Gramlin's women's coach. Is she a uh, Southern's graduate? Is she a, a Jaguar? Ooh. Let's see. They I know she's. The, I know she's from Baton Rouge, the second, right? They went to the second round of the WNIT. They were right there. All right, let's go ahead and look at Co Coach Courtney Simmons. Oh, Mr. Edwin Moore says no. She's not a, she's not a jag. Uh, she worked 
Um, she's a native of Baton Rouge. Yeah, I, I thought this, I was just wondering if she was a Southern graduate. She played at the University of Louisville uh, in 2006 and 2008 with two NCAA tournament appearances and a Sweet 16 appearance. Oh, so she played for the Cardinals, Louisville Cardinals? Yes, prior to her two season at Louisville, she played one season at Trinity Valley after beginning her yeah. career at Tulane in 2004 to 2005. Okay, so she went junior college first? No, she went to Tulane first, then she went junior college, then she went to Louisville. Okay, okay, I got you. Right, okay. Okay. Okay, uh, Mr. Moore says she was re reporting a final, okay, for the job after Coach Pew. Okay, all right, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was impressed with her. I watched her uh, a couple of times. I saw a couple of uh, Gremlin girls games. I I was impressed with her. Yeah, so once again, they they are these young ladies are when I say they're all entering into the transfer portal, I wish I could find a I'm getting ready to try to find a uh, um HBCU transfer portal for basketball so we could read off all the different uh, women's basketball that have entered. It's a lot. All right, let me see. It's a lot. Let me see. So for Alabama A&M, of course, they're going to have a lot. This is According to HBCU Sports, I'm going to copy and paste. And I'm wondering, is this movement more at the HBCU level? I can't really say for sure because the movement that's happening is happening on teams where there's some coaching uncertainty going on. I thought I heard something like a thousand or maybe two thousand kids in that basketball portal. So maybe it's not something that's unusual. No, it's um, not. I think people are just moving around. Right, right, right. So for Alabama A and M, they saw, of course, the most, and it's probably more than this. So it's about isn't it about two thousand kids in that basketball portal? I haven't heard two thousand. That's a lot. It, it, uh... I was thinking, I thought I heard a thousand, then I think I heard two thousand. I haven't seen uh, Zay Green. Demetria Shepard was in the, uh, in the, from Alabama, or excuse me, from Arkansas Pine Bluff. Jaleesa Reese, Kariah Beck, Maya Pete. Bethune Cookman had a couple. Right. Jackson State just had Maya Pratcher and Taylor Woodhouse, but those two students, student athletes, haven't been on the roster for uh, quite some time before they made their announcement. Mr. Mont, how did Bethune Cookman's girls finish out the regular season? I mean, in the conference, did they have a good season? Uh. You remember they had that one game where they had to beat. I want to say they had to win that game in order to get in. So, one, two, three. They finished ninth, six and 12. 15 and Ooh, 16 overall, six and 12. Yeah, six and 12 in the swag. That's not good at all. Hey, you know what? I, you know, you know Perry White, right? You, 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 do you ever watch, listen to him? Is he Southern? Yeah. He has a sister that works with him. I was thinking about you and her. I wish y'all could dialogue together because she's, she's like you. She's a bright star. She's a bright star. Her last name was Harris. I tuned in um, 
was it this past weekend and he had her on and uh she's she's really good i i would love to see y'all have a dialogue together i think okay. her last name is harris do you know who i'm talking about no i have to check that out i would love to hear y'all together she's 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 an up-and-coming star like you okay well i'll check her out mr ford yeah, her name is her last name is Harris, and I think she's involved with um, media there in Baton Rouge. And I, I think I'm, I, I'm sure in saying I think she's a Southern graduate. I was listening to her. Uh, yeah, here it is. Mr. Moore says she works for a Baton Rouge news station. She's good. I, I was very impressed with her. I was very impressed with her. Uh, she had on her cowboy hat and she talked about, she gave some of Southern's history. You know, she talked about Southern's history and I would love to see y'all, you know, on the same show or on the same panel. Okay, great. I'll look her up. Yeah, you do that. Yeah. Brand, yeah. Is her name Brandy Harris? I know the last name is Harris. Uh, Mr. Moore, what's her name? Uh, okay, I'll look her up. Yeah. I'd like um, for y'all to get together. They said in the chat that Bethune Cookman was competitive. Oh, girls? They were competitive girls wise? You don't remember that game where they all they had to do was win and they was in? If they lose, they out, and they couldn't close it. A and M will more than likely name a coach within two weeks. There it is, Mr. Moore said her name is Brandy Harris. That's what I just said, Mr. Ford. Brandy. I'm sorry. Her. Yeah, Brandy Harris. Yeah, I'd love to see y'all get together. I'd, I'd like to hear that because. All right, yeah. cool. Tell her to come on to an episode of She Loves Ball. I'll reach. Mr. Moore, sit, do, carry, uh, put them together, Mr. Moore. <laughs> put them together. I'd like to hear that. All right. So, Mr. Ford, mm -hmm. any lost last thoughts on SWAC basketball as a whole? I thought we improved men and women this year. I thought it was a step up from the previous year. Uh, and I think we can even get better next year. Um, now I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. Now I, you know I'm. I don't know if that's true or not about the moving the SWAC tournament to Atlanta. But uh, now you know I, I, if it did come here, I'd be very happy. <laughs> I'd be very happy. Uh, but like, I, I mean, you know, I've, I've said it a hundred times. I still say that the number one place for the SWAC tournament is Jackson, Mississippi. The number two place is uh, Baton Rouge. If that's the number three place, I would say it's Montgomery. I mean, okay. if we can get it, if we can get the SWAC tournament bumping like CIAA in Charlotte without all the uh, extra theatrics, I really think the SWAC tournament could really be something, right? I do too. I, 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 you know, like I said, you know, when I got to Grambling, the SWAC tournament was something. When I got to Grambling in '85, okay, the previous year it was in Jackson, right. and I think they had like eight thousand in attendance. That's what I'm for. Right. I want I want eight to ten thousand people in the house. Now you do know that some of that is literally based off of what teams are playing, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. if Jackson State is playing, uh, you're going to see it like the Jackson State versus Alcorn game. You know you're going to have a lot more in attendance. Oh, without a doubt. You saying for the for the for the for the SWAC tournament? Yeah, it also oh, yeah. depends on the matchups. But I will say this impressively, not even just SWAC basketball, but just HBCU basketball as a whole really turned up this year. You had yeah, Grambling go to the WNIT, so 
Yeah. Um, I would have liked to see Gremlin have the um, option like North Carolina a and So I had a chance to go to the last round for North Carolina a and uh, where they were going against uh, Troy. Right. But just to be able to have the game at home on their home court and they had basically sold out for each one of those rounds. It was amazing to see because uh, it was it was very little. The Troy probably made up, I would say, between the team and the fans, it was literally probably less than 20 to 25 fans there. There was literally – it was all – it was all North Carolina A and T there. Okay, I'm talking about from wall to wall, but just thinking about what type of impact that could have on being able to have that home court advantage. I mean, they did end up falling to Troy, but the ability to have uh, North Carolina A and T at home it definitely has an effect on. Right. And then they, it's basically like a styrofoam thing with a light in it. But when you turn the lights out, you can't really tell what it is. Um, but yeah, they had that going, and, and it was a sold out crowd, it was real nice. But I think, like Coach Reed said, some of these games they should definitely be. Either a, they should be at a neutral site. Okay. And I see UConn is just blazing back past folks left and right. So now that I look at how far UConn has went and and thinking is if it's between Iowa and UConn, it might be Iowa. Um. But. Um. For us, I think about how well we competed in their arena, and I'm and I'm just like, dang, we actually really did a really good job. Oh yeah, no because doubt about it. Was, it. it was an arena of ten thousand folks, right? And it was about sixty or seventy, maybe eighty at the most, that were rooting for Jackson State, not including the band. You're right. Oh yeah. And I'm well, let me ask you this. Out. I'm going to reach out to the commissioner about them moving that stuff. Oh, yeah, because you know you got his ear now. You got He listens to he you. He told me. He said that they can't keep moving this sweat tournament everywhere because um, you're not able to build a, a base. Like, you know, which for me, if you do have it in Atlanta, you do have – Alums from all over that. Well, let me. How, how many years has it been in uh, Birmingham at the Bartow Arena? Ain't it coming out six years? Yeah, it's about time for it to move. Use it. Don't they usually stay, what, like four or five years and then they move on? Yes, but he said that you're not able to build a base. See, what they need to do is they need to. Um, They need to mimic the CIAA in Charlotte, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was – I, I, I had so a chance to go mimic, there. They got to oh, yeah. mimic the attendance in Baltimore because in, in Charlotte, they had issues with attending the actual basketball game because folks will be out here in all these different parties. Well, but, listen, are they going to stay in Baltimore? Absolutely. Baltimore made Baltimore. I mean, it, 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 how, how many years are remaining on that contract? I want to say they extended it. The CIAA, okay. Okay, like, so. Baltimore actually appreciated the CIAA. Um, so they, when I say 
so it says CIAA and Visit Baltimore announced extension of the men and women's basketball tournament in Baltimore through 2026. Okay. I feel like we just need to ask for more, right? Mm-hmm. So um, they made it very lucrative for the CIAA to stay there. They actively right. got all of the um, local businesses involved. They were posting the black businesses. Um, it says the 2023 tournament had approximately 38,450 fans in attendance. That's that's fans that actually attended the basketball game. Oh, yeah. It says in total there were 63,844 individuals based on initial turnstile numbers, including media, student athletes, coaches, staff, and others who entered the arena during the tournament week with a paid ticket, as well as folks who entered without a paid ticket. And it says the CIAA tournament generated a total economic impact of 29.6 million, which Mm. supported 1,500 part time and full-time jobs and generated 2.5 million in state and local taxes. The financial success was made possible by the state of Maryland, Baltimore City, and local organizing committee. In addition to total economic impact, the tournament generated 17.7 million in participant and spectator offsite spending with 5.4 million spent in food and beverage sector, 4 million in lodging, 3.4 million in entertainment and attractions. 3.2 3.2 million in retail spending and 1.7 million in transportation and local ride share companies. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, they definitely made it lucrative, but I feel like the C, uh, I feel like SWAC has to know that they have a big brand going, right? Oh, yeah. And so they don't, they can't be afraid to ask for. Whatever they feel they need to ask for, right? They need to be able to say, hey, we need to not pay for the stadium. It needs to be paid for. Now, whether that... Now, what, wait a minute. What stadium are we talking about? Or what, whatever arena they intend to have it at. Oh, right? yeah. Okay. 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 Whatever arena that they intend to have the actual tournament at. Well, let me ask you, have you met the uh, commissioner of the CIAA? I have not. I was just one. I, I've seen a picture. But I don't know them really. You know, I haven't read. You know, I'm a biography person. I like to know, you know, I, I just like to hear what how, pe- how the people in the. How are they doing it? How are they getting it done? I feel like they need to, you know, that's definitely important to figure out, well, dang, how are these folks? I think the, can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I think the commissioner of CIAA, he's a woman. Yeah, that's what I thought it was. I I thought I saw a picture, but I I haven't really followed her like I have Dr. McClellan and uh, Miss Steele and them at the MEAC. And I was just one, you know, I would like to hear somebody's take on her, you know. Yeah, I'd like to know more about her. I think she's one of three uh, commissioners, uh, HBCU commissioners, because I, I, I interviewed yesterday, Dr. Kiki Baker Barnes. Right. <laughs> yes, for the GCA. Yeah, that's, that's, it's not, th- what schools, that's, what, give me the schools that she represents. Who, GCAC? Yeah. You're talking about this. Uh, right, Tuvalu, that's okay. Yeah, maybe yeah, all those schools deal it. Right, uh, that's right. Those are yeah, those are NAIA schools. NAIA, and then she's about to add uh, uh, Voorhees, Wilberforce, and Stillman. Okay, and then, okay, yeah, they're the only conference that has uh, the school in the United States territory. Uh, you, well, uh, let me ask you now, this lady that's the uh. Commissioner of CIAA, what's her name? What is her name? Let me, let me see because I remember that they had did a story on all three of them one time. Now, is she is she a graduate of a CIAA school or where does she come from? What's CIAA her undergrad? CIAA commissioner is Jackie McWilliams Parker. Right. 
and and she's graduate of what what school? Undergraduate. Oh, well. Is that, is she, she's not a Hampton graduate, is she? Is she a Hampton graduate? Yeah, I'm not going I know that she has fan fest, breakfast, women's empowerment, cinemas, uh, alumni parties, all during the CIAA tournament. But you, you don't see whether or not she's a Hampton graduate? Because I think she played basketball for Hampton. You said I she, think she played for yeah, I think she played for Hampton. I think I remember her. You remember everybody, Mr. Ford. I know it, but I think she played basketball for Hampton. You got an encyclopedia in your brain. No, I know. I know. All right, let me pull her up. Somebody, Miss <laughs> FHC, said, yeah, she's a Hampton grad. All right, I'm pull it up. She's been there for a while, too. So, shoot. We might need to reach out to her. All right. Let's see. Jackie McWilliams Parker. She is was named the commissioner for CIA, CIAA in 2012. Mm -hmm. She was the first appointed African-American female commissioner representing NCAA Division 1, 2, and 3. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. She earned a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology from Hampton University. I knew it. Yeah. A Master of Arts in Sports Management and Administration. He was a basketball player. Temple University. Mm -hmm. She was a two-sport athlete at Hampton and was a member yeah. of the Hampton University 1988 NCAA Division II Women's Basketball Championship team. Yeah, yeah. Freshman Player that. of the Year in 1988 and Player yeah. of the Year for CIAA Volleyball in 1990. Yeah. She played with a girl named Jackie Dolberry. They, they, Jackie Dolberry was like the maybe the greatest female basketball player in the history of Hampton. That's when I think Coach Sweat, who left Hampton and went to Norfolk State, I think he was their coach. I, I need to check it. I think they won the national championship. I need to go back and check that. Um, so she negotiated deals and partners with different uh, corporations, which is really good, right? Mm -hmm. um, this one hasn't been... Um, this one hasn't been updated because it talks about the six-year extension at Charlotte, North Carolina, valued at $2.5 million. But they have since decided to relocate, of course, to Baltimore right. for the CIAA. Um, right. But they said that the CIAA, like, as far as the amount of people that are actually going to the tournament, it's like a world of a difference uh, in Baltimore. <laughs> than it was at, at in Charlotte. Right. Right. M Mr. Ford gonna ask the question. I already <laughs> had my Google I already had my Google search up. Yeah, I I, I, I remember yeah. I, so I Mr. Ford sweat. asked which um, what hotels are we selling out for our tournaments? So one thing one negotiation that I feel like um the WAC should be able to do is get these hotels locked in for a decent price. Which really, when you're in Atlanta, you can find a hotel for a decent price, but locking in those hotels at affordable prices. Because I know yeah, when right. CIAA happened, oh my God, they had the Red Roof in costing $250 to $300 a night. Price gouging. Yeah, price it was gouging. absolutely... It was absolutely ridiculous to see yeah, that. That's they started bad. adding charges at the restaurants. They started adding charges um, that they normally wouldn't put on there, but they put it on there specifically for CIAA. 
and they were complaining, but I know that they see that that, that economic downturn in Charlotte, um, um, whether they want to admit it or not, that the lack of the CIAA there definitely impacted a lot of the businesses and local restaurants. Yeah. Low bookings don't give you any negotiating power with hotels. Uh, I think that they can lock in a couple prices. EA, they are not gouging. You just have to get it before they release the dates. When you know what they're the date of something that's going on in Jackson, you just book it, reserve it before then. Rattlers don't get a discount. And I know, I know that the the not the second lowest of hills, one of their main complaints is that in Tallahassee that there's nowhere to stay with the hotels and that they price gouge. Terribly wait, because only have a wait, 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 Mr. Mona. Tallahassee mm -hmm. has Florida State and they don't have nowhere to stay. They said that they price gouge. Yeah, they do price gouge. But I thought gouge. you just said that you said that there were no hotel rooms or something. That's what they, they said price. at Tallahassee. Yeah, they do price at gouge. Listen, you know them people got places to stay. They got one of the top football programs in the nation down there. I bet Charlotte did try to get CIAA back, but it was Charlotte for for CIAA to go back to Charlotte. I would have made I would have made them throw a bag, and they would have had to um, cap a lot of things. So they would have had to cap the hotels. They would have had to cap no. They would have told all those restaurants, "Don't be adding no extra fees." Like, honestly, I'm glad that CIAA decided to stay in Baltimore because of the way that they were treating um, the folks that were attending. It's Timona, the CIAA tournament belongs in North Carolina. Well, not, not in Charlotte, not how they was treating them. You got a place called Winston-Salem. You got one called Greensboro. Greensboro? Mm. <laughs> Don't they yeah, have a policy in Greensboro? They, not, they do got, they they do got one. They do got one, but what about would, uh, uh Winston Salem really, is uh I'm not the home of Wake Forest? They I'm got a big arena, be, right? I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but there is nothing in Greensboro like nightlife wise. Well, I like I said again, it's, the it's a, CIAA belongs in North Carolina. You feel it's like it belongs in it's North a Carolina? Yes, it does. Yes, Not it does. Not treating, but the way they treated it was. It, I I was saying, no, you can't have no ice cream. Why? No, you're not going to get no ice cream. What? You had ice cream earlier today. Um, North Carolina, they didn't treat the patrons right i would rather be in baltimore around other black folks and why would you move it after you have sixty-four thousand attendants the game they'll have more than that if it's in north carolina no they will and, not that's the problem the mayor, they didn't the have mayor, no the mayor the mayor loves the mayor of baltimore he loves having that tournament in his city like I bet you he do. And he they, does. When I tell you they were doing all type of stuff, they were having commercials and stuff. They were telling, um, they had an app that you could download where they will tell you what uh, black businesses or just what businesses to visit. And when you visit there, you can use the app to get like a 10% off discount or whatever. It was a very interactive way for them to, you know, keep the patrons there. I feel like this Baltimore has done enough to keep the CIAA there, then keep it there. And Mr. Moore said there's not enough hotels in Tally to host Florida State and FAMU football games around the same weekend. We have the same issues in Baton Rouge with Southern and LSU. They do. Because remember, Tallahassee is, is, is an actual college town. 
is is not I mean it's big it's not as big what people would think it is and they do like it was it was hard for me to get you know it was hard for them to get a hotel that's the reason why I think I, we got the Airbnb it was easier for me to get the Airbnb when I went down to Tallahassee um but it, like having the CIAA in Baltimore it, it is a good thing I mean you you do got a, I mean you do got a couple of schools in Maryland <laughs> that are in the CIAA. <laughs> so well, you got Bowie. What? Yeah, that's Bowie State. Yeah, Bowie State in Maryland. It's a uh, spring break for Braxton. That's why he's up. Any last words, Doc, about uh, Coach Reed? What do you think? I just want everybody to just chill out, calm down, let the process take its course. Um, if she signs the deal, she signs the deal. I mean, she, she does have that leverage to, to do what she, you know, what is best for her. So, um, we just let the process play out. You just let it play out. Meaning just, just, I want to say, just not rush the process. Trust the process. Hmm. Just like they do, you know, like they did with Joel and B, trust in the process, trust the process. Just trust the process. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Just, just trust the process. Just trust the process and just trust, mm -hmm. trust A.D. Robson. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, 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 he hasn't let us down. <laughs> since he's been an athletic director. I mean, he's he put the ball in her court allegedly. So True. So that's why I like that's all I gotta say. Just trust it. Just trust the process. So that's what you feel. Just trust the process. Yep, that's just trust the process. <laughs> okay. Um, so Mr. Ford, what do you think? Uh, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I said earlier, uh, whatever she decides to do, I'm 100% behind her. I think she's a class act. Uh, wherever she goes, I, I will always support her. Um, uh, I just, I, you know, of course, I don't want her to leave Jackson, but after she leaves, I mean, I'm still with her, you know. Uh, okay, it's this up is to her. This is me right here, y'all. This is me. <laughs> you see what I just said? Class I and she fine. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh, yeah. What you mean you can't hear it? I was trying to play the um, video of the lady rolling around on the ground. They said they can't hear it. I thought it. that was for Florida and them. That's for Jackson, too? If Tamika Lee, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Tamika made it big time. I'm gonna be rolling around. <laughs> it is, it is for um, fam you because Willie did leave, and they, you know, they don't have folks entering the transfer portal. But you know what? That's all a part of. That's that's just all a part of football, right? They gonna come and they gonna go. And by the way, Mr. Mona, you before you go, what's the word at uh, Jackson Spring football uh, is uh, that Morgan kid looking like uh, Cam Newton? What's going on? Yeah, well, Doc, y'all ain't got no news. Is he looking like Cam Newton? Yeah, is he looking like that's, what's his name, Jacoby Morgan? Is he looking like Cam Newton? That's Superman two point You didn't know that. What I'm saying, what's going on, and and who's running? The, uh, who's uh, who's the quarterback coach, and who's calling the plays? The quarterback coach is Coach Kirk. 
Is, is that the guy from Mississippi State? Um, yeah. And uh, you know who's calling the plays, right? No, no. Who's calling the plays? Coach T.C. Taylor calling the plays. You didn't know that? No. no. Yeah, he's calling the plays. What you, what you think about that? He made it big time with it. Sorry about that, Mr. Ford. Yeah, I thought that was your Florida and M dig. I didn't know that. It was a dig, but the same thing that'll make you make you laugh or make you cry, won't it? Yeah, I thought that was your Florida and M thing. It it is. Shoot, if Coach Tamika Reed leave, that's gonna be I'm gonna be rolling around on the floor. Hey, how's your baseball team? The baseball team's looking really good. How's Jackson's baseball team looking? Man, we got our, and I'm going to just say it, we got our ass whooped by FAMU. Do you hear me? In, in Jackson or in Tallahassee? In Tallahassee! It Was it today? No, it wasn't today, but Mr. Ford, it was so bad. I. It was so bad. You didn't even want to talk about it. And I was over there talking mess. And we got our ass whooped bad. You want to know how bad it was? You didn't see the score? No. Mind you, they 12 and 17 overall. Ain't win no kind of ain't win no kind of uh out of conference games. Right. And they're 12 and 17, but they're seven and two in the conference. So the only one that I want to say they lost to was uh I want to say they lost to Bethune Cookman. Okay, Jackson lost to Bethune or Fam lost no, to Bethune. No, no, Fam, you lost to Bethune Cookman. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask so, this then. But how, now how, we're how? all the way in third place now. I want to say Bethune Cookman's in first place right now, and we go to Bethune this weekend. We need to beat them. Well, let me ask: what's, what's the word in Jackson on the uh, men and women's track program? Uh, are they a threat to win the SWAC? No, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. All right, you want to hear these scores? Yeah, yeah. Let me hear the scores. They. Um. They beat us eleven to one, uh -huh. eight to three, and ten to one. And what 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 was the date of these On games? Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Huh? This past Ooh. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Okay. Uh -huh. But I was asking, um, then, uh, what's the, what's the word on uh, Jackson's uh, uh, track and field men and women's program? You heard anything on them? Um, yes, they actually competed this past week in Texas. And, and, and they, they did, did real well? They did okay. They did okay. Um, I haven't had any, I don't know any, uh, have any word on necessarily if they're going to be able to take the SWAT. Usually that runs through either Alabama State or Right, Florida that's right. You're right, Alabama State. And them in men's and women track? Yeah, I know they were good down there with Doctor Moore, but I didn't really, I didn't know anything about them being. Maybe I, I mean, maybe I need to do my research. I, you yeah, right so, about so for the, Yeah, so for the SWAC baseball um, rankings, you know. Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm 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 sorry. I was thinking. I thought you were talking about SWAC track and field. That's you oh, right. No, Fair I was here. talking about that too. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. For yeah. baseball, it's it's. It's up in. Oh, let's look. So Bethune Cookman is leading right now, uh, seven to one, with a fifteen to twelve overall. 
Florida right. A&M is seven to two with twelve to seventeen. Can you believe that Jackson State has a twenty and eight overall record, and we're third in the SWAC because you have to win. You have to win those out of conference tournament, or excuse me, those in conference games. Yeah, that means y'all got over here be, What? And that we means play that, that, big that, powerhouses that, that, too. Yeah, but that means that tournament is going to be out of sight. That tournament is going to be hot. That baseball tournament is going to be hot when they come to Atlanta. That's going to be hot. It's going to be a lot of people capable of winning that tournament. That tournament is going to be even better than it was last year. Well, look, we don't need to get our ass whooped like that ever again by FAMU. We're leading in our overall percentage win versus losses. We're 20 and 8. You're 100. Yeah. And so, oh yeah, the spring game is this Saturday at 3 p.m. Another one's been Oh, is is it televised? Um, it should be televised on the Jackson State Sports Network. Okay. Okay. And okay. EA talking about stop playing middle school, te- but we play some big powerhouses like Memphis. You beat? Did you beat Memphis? Yes, we beat oh, Memphis. Yeah. We beat Memphis. We beat Butler. We beat Alcorn. We have Mercy. Did you see UAPB? We beat UAPB too, thirteen to three. That was a Mercy. We had the Mercy rule at Arkansas Pine Bluff. Arkansas Pine Bluff beat the snot out of Alcorn. It was. It was embarrassing. I know they was embarrassed. I think I heard about that. And you know what's crazy is they have a two seven, a two seven win streak in in conference. Right. They beat Alcorn State twenty nine to three, and then sixteen to four. They did yeah. lose one seven to eight, but they how do you even get twenty nine wins? What happened to your pitchers that game? Let, let me ask this. How many quarterbacks are, uh, is in spring right now for Jackson? How many quarterbacks y'all got? Zay, Zay McDonald, Jacoby and Morgan, Ethan right. Terrell. And I want to say I'm not sure if Philip Short is still playing. So you got about four, five? What do you have? Five? We got three and a possible. Almost okay. like Spades. We almost got bored. Okay, so Mr. Carey saying three. So that would be Zay McDonald, Jacoby and Morgan, and then we have Ethan Terrell. As you know, Ethan Terrell is the uh, high school recruit that was out of Texas who bought half of his O-line. Okay. Okay, Miss Whitley says there's, they said more quarterback. Okay, more quarterbacks on the way. Okay. And we mercy ruled uh, Pine Bluff again today. So, yeah. Hey, is this blue on here? I see Zach. Is this blue? Yeah. Hey, blue. What what's going on over there at Alabama State, man? What what's the word with uh, that body key? Body. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on? Is he gonna win this track and all that? What's going on over there? Oh, Lord. So, are we doing Are we doing the swap runs to the quarterback again this year? What, what was that? Are you doing the swap runs through whoever quarterback is this year? Yeah, I'm just wondering. I, uh, they, make, they made a lot of moves over there at Alabama State, man. They brought in a lot of people and uh, I want to hear what Blue had to say about that. Are uh, they going to win this? He heard they look good. They think the defense is better than last oh, year. Oh, that's something else. So the defense is better than last year? The defense is better, and they lost a couple of players. Ooh. But I just want to know, what, what, what's Blue hearing about Andrew Body is? I mean, is he is he tearing it up? Is he's he first talking, He's talking about the defense. We're asking so about you, the so offense. What, so you know what that means. Blue is in here, and Blue is talking about the defense. 
He hey, said, hey, I heard Blue, they look good. What, what about that they new offensive coordinator over there? What, what's the word on the the guy that was that they brought from Winston Salem? What, what's going on with that? Is is it is is he put in a new offense or what, what are they doing? A lot of people are saying Andrew Body is overrated. Yeah, well, we'll see. Like I said, uh, now we got to give him credit. That guy. Yeah, Blue, said he's got to, Blue said he's got to create a, a burner. He can't be letting out all the information. Oh. But listen, that guy at um that head coach at uh, Alabama State has made a lot of moves during the offseason. At, at Robinson, uh, coach, coach Coach Robinson. Yeah, Coach Eddie Robinson. He's made a lot of moves in the off season. Do you think they're strategic moves? So because their defense was already stout. So what do you think? Offensively, they got their quarterback now. They got to make sure they got an all, all, all line now, right? Well, my main thing was for the longest was offense coordinator, and I think they got that now. I, I said for years Alabama State needed an offensive coordinator. Um, Blue says body looks good from what I hear, but I still need to see more from the wide receivers. Losing Deshaun was huge. Yeah, I agree and with he that. He wants to see more production. Yeah, I remember that's that Keyshawn Johnson, right? Yeah, last time yeah, A&M really played good. body, he got folded. Oh Lord. <laughs> yeah, I remember when he got hurt. Yeah. I. So blue is that blue Miss off the top of your head is is uh Alabama State gonna win the swag in football. What? No, Jackson State is the front runner. What are you talking about? No, Fam U is the front runner. How is Fam U a front runner? They are the they defending champ. Lost? No, they are the defending champs. Mr. So Ford, they are they the front lost, runner. They lost their coach, they lost their quarterback, they lost several of their coaches. If anybody in these HBCU spaces says okay. that FAMU is projected to win the SWAT, I'm going to know something and I'm going to cut up real bad. You know I mean, why I'm going to cut up real bad? Mr. Mona, they are the defending champs. They but are the that, defending they champs. They lost their coach. They lost all their coaches. They have literally no coaches left. Well, except for a couple of, and they lost Gentle Hunt. Did you hear that? They're not gonna miss him. Oh, you was yeah. bragging about Gentle Hunt. I am, but listen, when them guys leave, fam, like that guy left and went to Jacksonville State, them guys are not missed. I'm telling you. Uh oh, where? Is she? Dang, they said Shalomai Sanders is gonna leave uh, Colorado. Who? Dion's daughter. Oh, oh, the, the basketball player. Yeah. Was she was she playing a lot? No. <laughs> no. That um, is the breaking news, right? Listen, that uh, Jim Hart. Let me tell you something. If he leaves, he won't be missed. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! I didn't say Colsey wasn't a great coach. Now. I ain't going to say all that, but what I'm going to say is this. You cannot give, uh, just like you guys didn't want to give Jackson State any type of, they're the defending champs. Y'all didn't want to give us the front run. You can't do when, that for when, Yes, we did. When, when, did, when did I not give Jackson State? When, when, when After we lost the Celebration Bowl and it was next, next year up, you said FAMU is the perennial winner for the foreseeable future. Oh, yeah. Now, this is what I said. I said that the FAMU people in Atlanta told me that Dion was gone and it was Willie time. Remember I said that? That's what they told me. And guess what? Guess what? Willie gone. <laughs> Willie gone. And now it's our time. All right. But still, the, the favorite should be the defending champ, and that's Florida a &M Rattlers, right? Aren't they the defending SWAC football champions? Hey, I'm just telling you what it was. 
I mean, they celebration bowl champs. Right. That's what I'm saying. They, they were the, they were the defending second, champions. Gentle Hunt was their second best player. I don't think he's going to, they're going to. He's, be he's not going to be. Him. Listen. Uh-uh. Them guys leave Florida and them and like that, and they go, you know, go in that transfer portal. I'm telling you, them guys are not missed. They not missed. They they had a defensive end. Everybody was looking forward to him having a great year at Florida and them. He transferred to Jacksonville State. Guess what? Everybody's forgotten him. You remember, you know who I'm talking about? Remember that defensive end? Yeah, I he, he remember. Left. He went to he Jacksonville. Went to yeah, and yeah. listen, he was not. Hey, is this how you do the strike? I don't think that's how you do the strike. The coach don't even know how to do the strike. He over there doing half Florida State chop, half. He gonna have to work on that. Well, hey. I, 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 has anybody got a report on FAMU spring? How's the spring been? Anybody know? They've been hopping in the Florida. <laughs> I mean, the they, portal. They've been doing what? <laughs> Say what, Mr. Timon? They've been hopping in the portal uh, before the spring game. You showed it, you're saying a lot of the guys are leaving? I just said that. And you was just like, they won't be missed. No, they I won't just... be missed. <laughs> they won't. I'm, telling you, I, I'm serious. They won't be missed. They've been hopping in the portal now. I'm, you know what? Let me just go ahead and preface this because I'm talking mess, but but here's the real truth. There's a lot of players that hop in the portal right after the spring game, and there's a lot of players that come right after they come in the summer and for fall camp. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You're right. Absolutely. Well, let me ask you, has anybody said anything about Southern's uh how, how's that uh Spring going down in Baton Rouge. Oh boy, that's even worse. Anybody heard anything about them? We well, I mean, heard it's, about it's, Southern. Uh, that's we Coach congratulate, Gray. We congratulating Southern on their win versus LSU, the baseball team. They beat them twelve to seven, and yeah. LSU only had four hits. Yeah, we they had did. four hits. But uh, when it comes to Southern and their football program, we ain't heard nothing. <laughs> Blue said he doesn't think FAMU starting quarterback quarterback is on the roster. Wait a minute, uh, Blue. What about the kid came from FAU? No, isn't he, that kid named he, Richardson? I thought he was. He uh, said no. He said they do not have a starting quarterback. That's not a good. If you're trying to run it back, not having your starter quarterback starting quarterback in the spring, that's a problem. Mirtovich is not it. Yeah, but what about that Richardson kid? That kid uh, played at um, FAU and played at one of the Michigan schools, didn't he? Here you go over here. Here you go. Sprouting him out. Yeah, the Richardson kid. Uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his first name? I remember you had me look him up, and from what I seen, he had barely any playing time at that. Uh, but he got a lot of experience behind him, Mr. Ball. Blue said he's not good. <laughs> what? <laughs> he's not good. <laughs> he's not good, Mr. Ford. I'm, I'm pre I see what Blue's saying. I'm, uh... Junior is a better quarterback than him. Richard so is, is Junior, Junior going to be? Hey, Blue is Junior going to be the starter? And this, and this is the thing: if Junior Maratovich was so good, then why wasn't he sharing time with Musa? Even when Musa was bad, Coach still didn't sit him down. Yeah, uh, I can't say. Listen, Musa led him to the promised land. I can't say nothing about Musa. Mr. Ford, you acting like this is a Saturday or a Friday night live. Don't you got school tomorrow? No, it's spring holidays. Oh, you on spring break too? Yeah, it's spring holidays. I was wondering. I'm like, dang, he's over here conversating like a buzz. No yeah, wonder. Spring, you spring on, holidays. You on spring break like me. Yeah, or, no, like my son. 
But listen, Musa led FAMU to the uh, promised land. They won the swag. They won the Celebration Bowl. I don't have nothing bad to say about Musa. I didn't say anything bad about him. What I said nothing. was that Maritovich was sitting behind Musa and look. You but, heard but, 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 as, hey, Blue, Blue is did, not have, biased. Blue's not so, biased. So is Blue, have you seen Maritovich this spring? Or have you been to Tallahassee? Any, anybody seen the, any practices? No, nobody seen any practices. Nope. We they they've been closed off, but uh, sources oh, say oh. that FAMU is running it back. They have all intentions and purposes of running it back. Yeah, that's what that that's the word up here that they're gonna run it back. It says that's a saying that the Richardson kid is not good. He said that he has some potential, but he's concerned about his interceptions. His best season was in 2021 at CMU, but I haven't seen that in his game over the past few seasons. Oh, okay. okay. He's a he's a walking pick six, is what they're saying. What? He didn't say that. I said that. Oh, oh. <laughs> So, so blue, you're not gonna go on the line, and Alabama State's not your preseason favorite to win the swag, right? It looks like Jackson State is a front runner because all you, corn, all, Mr. Mona, it's Florida and him because all corn has Aaron Allen's gone, so I don't know who their quarterback is, and then you know, I mean, well, what happened to the kid from uh, Missouri? Didn't he get injured? But he should be the starting quarterback, right? I mean, you got a brand new coach now. You don't got Fred McNair anymore. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But they remember, it Florida ooh, and They said it definitely ain't Gremlin. Dear Gremlin. That's what they said. It hey, ain't listen, be Gremlin. Y'all, y'all, listen. You let ain't mentioned Gremlin this whole let, time. Let, so let, 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 me, let me say this. Let me say this. Okay. We got Coach, what's Coach Mickey Joseph, head coach. We got Dooley as offense coordinator. We got Jason Rollins as defense coordinator. Who can beat that? Uh, apparently everybody because you ain't even mentioned Gremlin in the car. Who could, who could be listen, the G me and a back, okay? I'm I'm you, I'm, you know, know what? I'm, you wanna be a rattler or a tiger. I'm gonna just no, call you no, a I'm a I'm a I'm a tiger. Okay. I'm I'm a graduate of Gramlin State. I'm a tiger. But when it comes to Florida and M, I gotta get them guys credit. They the defending champs. The defending champs. It's JSU, then everybody else. Okay, no, real talk. When we talk about, like, being able to maintain your roster, I'm – you know what? I'm going – if I'm going to do my preseason rankings, I'm doing right. Jackson State, Bethune-Cookman, Alabama State. You're going with them uh, – you're going with them Wildcats. Yeah, so Jackson State, Hell Bethune-Cookman, Alabama you know, State. That. Listen, play that – you know how you play that um, – that theme song that Bethune Cook, I love that. You know, could you play that? You know how you play that theme song for uh, Bethune Cookman? Yeah. You play that. Play that. Did you Did you see that they got one point eight million dollars? No. Who is Bethune? Yeah. Yes. What, what, what did they get one point eight for? They got it for uh, the football program. Oh, that's okay. So I mean, was I mean, was it a donation or was yes, this? Yes, it was a, a huge donation from two different. One of them was a um, like a private donor, and the other one was from like the Daytona Speed Racing, and that was that was all that was all without without Ed Reed. I was about Ed to say what whatever happened to Ed Reed. Man, we I'm so know. glad we went to Mitch. There it is. <laughs> Can you hear it? Yes, I did. 
You heard, oh, okay, because they couldn't hear the other one. I love that, Mr. Smoke. I love that. Hey, there Mr. Mo. Uh, listen, what what what? Uh, think about this: the Florida Classic. Florida a and and Bethune-Cookman playing for the championship of the Swackies. What do you think about that? Wait, say that again. Next next year in November at the Florida Classic, Bethune-Cookman and Florida a and playing for the Swack East Championship. What do you think about that? <clears throat> What do I think about that? Yeah, Florida a and m and Bethune Cookman playing for the Swack East Championship in I, in Orlando, Florida, at in that place called Camping World Stadium or something. What's that place called? Uh, you need to leave that. You need to leave that dope alone. <laughs> he need to leave that dope alone. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you just said that. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, presupposing. Here, me, you know, I'm, could you I'm, see I'm, it, that, that Florida a &M and Bethune Cookman meeting in November at I'm Camping World Stadium? That dope <laughs> is running them crazy. Stop smoking that dope. And, and for the crazy. for the SWAC East Championship. No, absolutely not. No, no, and no, no. Okay, all right. No, I'm just, no. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, because you know they said it, but Tom Cooper then went out and recruited the world. So now, they went out okay, and got so all the kids out the Pac-12. And they done brought them to Daytona Beach. Oh, man. Okay, so you know what? I need to hear your pre your preseason Swack East top three. What's your preseason in the Swack East? It's, it's got to, okay. Okay, in the East, we got to go with fam number one because they the defending Swack champion. Then I got... Jackson State, and then I got Alabama State. Cause I'm I'm serious. Uh, I I know it's been going under the radar, but this guy over here at Alabama State's been making a lot of moves, and I was waiting to see what Blue was gonna say about it. Cause my thing is, is this guy gonna win the swag? Cause he's making a lot of moves. Okay, you, this guy goes out and get a new offense coordinator. This guy, I think he won two or three. Uh, celebration bowls, this this new offense coordinator. You know, he was originally where he was at North Carolina AT. Okay. And then I think he went to South Carolina State and then he went to Winston Salem. Now they bringing him down from Winston Salem, Alabama State. Okay. I'm going to do, I'm going to do folks like how they did Jackson State with whenever, in do? regards to FAMU, it's too many unknowns. They lost their coach. They lost their quarterback. It's too many unknowns. I'm going to do them like how they did. Wait a minute. Jackson Mr. Moon, State. they got all them boys coming back down in Tallahassee. No, they do not have all them boys coming back. They've been slowly and quietly. I know you, but you're talking about General Hunt. Listen, listen. Um, listen, let me say this again. General Hunt is not going to be missed if he leaves Tallahassee. Because I'm telling you what happens down there. When them kids leave Tallahassee, they are forgotten. I'm telling you. Remember that Land kid, and y'all was talking about how great he was. The next year, Land leaves. Okay, he wasn't missed. 
Okay, and I, I just gave you the example of that defensive end. He left, and he went over to Jacksonville State. I don't even remember his name. Mm. Mm. I don't, I don't, but listen, I, I, I was trying to get Blue to elaborate. Okay, this guy, this Eddie Robinson guy, Coach Eddie Robinson, this guy making moves. Okay. And some of them moves are boss moves. So, once again, I say to Blue, is Alabama State going to win the swag? Okay. <laughs> uh, what You talk about Alabama State winning the swag? Yeah, they going to win the swag or what? And like I said, this guy making a lot of moves. This guy going out getting personnel, okay, for a I'm long time. I'm not going to talk no more smack to Coach Eddie Robinson because when I was at SWAC Media Day and I was right. um, interviewing him, I asked him about how he wanted to um, <laughs> schedule Jackson State for our, for homecoming. And he was real humble and, and professional about it. And he was like, you know, in the heat of the moment. And then he came in Jack State, whoop our ass. So, you know, I don't got nothing to say. I'm well, let me say this. Let me say I'm that over about here that in my book. Now, actually, Jackson State had a better team than Alabama State. I watched the game. Okay. Now, my problem was with the defense coordination of that game. That was my problem. Okay. Because Jackson State had a better team than Alabama State and lost that homecoming game. Jackson State had a better team than Prairie View. And I'm, I'm sorry, not Prairie View, then Alcorn and lost that Soul Bowl. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I, that's why I wasn't hurt when I liked Coach Bradley is a defensive line coach. I was not in love with his defense coordination, and I don't have no problem the fact that he's gone to – didn't you tell me South Alabama? Yeah. Where, where is he going? Okay, yep, well, South I don't, Alabama. Okay, let me tell you this. He's not going to be missed either. He's not going to be missed either. Mm -hmm. I think the guy that you're talking about, that Coach Quinn, I think he's the right man. I'm waiting to see him. Uh, Callie, um, Coach Callie, they have high praises on that coach too, the defensive line coach. Yeah, I, I don't think Coach Bradley's going to be missed. I really don't. I don't think he's going to be missed. And so, you know, that's why when we say BAMU as the front runner with all these unknowns, cannot rank them first. Stop smoking but that dope. Mr. Mona, they are the defending SWAC champions. They are the defending Celebration Bowl winners. They have to be the odds-on favorite. Okay? Why and so, were like we I said, the odds-on favorite? Jackson's second. And then, like I say, the school that's making the boss moves for me. Alabama State. It, is this Alabama? And I, won't, I'm, I, I was hoping that Blue was going to give us some tea. Because my thing well, is, with all them moves being moved, made... Blue is, Blue is hiding the T. Blue is hiding the T because he said Alabama State, their defense looks better than last year. He's not really... He said that the wide receivers aren't nothing to brag home about. He has to see what they can do. Because okay. you can not, have not, Andrew not, Body all day long if you don't have any... But now, have any Jack, now, 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 I mean, now, perennially... Alabama State always has a great defense. Their problem to me has always been offensive coordination. I'm thinking that they've ended that problem with this new coach coming from Winston-Salem. And so I want somebody to go out on the limb here and tell us that Alabama State's going to win the SWAT and go to the Celebration Bowl and win that too. Well, you ain't going to hear that on She Loves the Podcast. That's for damn sure. You won't be hearing none of such a sort unless it's somebody come up on here. I'm not finna say it. What about you, Blue? Blue not finna say it neither. Blue, Blue already said 
said it. He said he's got too many unknowns. Not in this space. You ain't going to find it. Oh, okay, so now, Blue, yeah, said, Blue said, Blue said, I've said multiple times that I agree Alabama State Penn needs State. to win the swag. I'm not sure right. if they'll do it, if that's what they'll do, but it's a win now year and anything but a celebration bowl is a disappointment. Dang. So Blue got him as. Uh, um, he he's saying say that, that, that this is, wait, he Blue said is saying that it's daytime. State and hey. Jackson State and FAMU are home hey, games. So, Alabama so State blue, there. hey blue. So you saying it's the year them hornets, huh? It's the year them hornets, right? Oh, okay, because you know what we said last year was the year them rattlers. It's so blue <laughs> saying it's the year them hornets. <gasps> oh my god! Hey blue, is it the year them hornets? Did he say something? He just laughed. Okay, so um, yeah. <clears throat> we got our snake away. We got our horn. We got our raid. <laughs> We're ready. Hey. Yeah, Mr. Mona, make sure you get that interview with Coach Eddie Robinson. Cause he been listen, he 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 been wheeling and dealing. He been wheeling and dealing. A and M is kicking Alabama State's ass in the classic. You know, it's a must win for Maynard too. It's a lot of folks who got oh, must wins. It's a must right. win for everybody. The only well, person that it's not yeah. a must win for is uh well, Mr. Mona, you're right. It's, it's definitely much more for me. It's a must uh, win for Jackson State, too. Oh, did you hear that Quay well, Davis yeah. that was at Jackson State that went to Texas Southern is now at, at FAMU? Quay Davis is at FAMU? He just transferred there. <laughs> oh. Whoa. He's going to play. He's going to play. They said that Quay is the third string. No, but you know, fam plays a lot of uh, fam plays a lot of wide receiver. They play a lot of wide, and uh, we don't they even know what type of offense they get ready to have. They gonna have the same offense that Willie Simmons had. His his offense coordinator still there, and he's a chief play caller. Uh, I think his name is Joseph Henry. Isn't, isn't that right? Somebody from fam. You what's your what's your offense coordinator's name? Isn't it Henry? He's he's a disciple of um, Willie Simmons, isn't that okay. isn't that his name? Yep. I mean, I yeah. told Mister Ford. Mister Ford said he's on spring break. So you coming back here on Thursday, Mister Ford? Yeah, I'm on spring break. My yeah. man, we should know. We should know um, whether or not I'm gonna be rolling on the floor. Um, we, we should know something by then. Whether or not and, and do me a on favor. The floor or celebrating. Well, do me a favor too. After you get through rolling on the floor, how about calling Coach Eddie Robson and ask him what is he up to? Tell him that the swag want to know what's <laughs> going on. What he doing down there in Montgomery under the <laughs> radar? Okay, so give me five questions to ask. Okay, so of course you want we want to know about that new offense coordinator. Okay, tell us, about your, tell us about, about your tell us about your new offense coordinator. Offensive coordinator. Coordinator. We want to know about uh, the quarterback room. We definitely want to know about the quarterback room. How many quarterbacks does he have? Uh, how many? You trying to get the inside scoop? Ain't yeah, because I'm this guy. I'm telling you, this guy is doing a lot of stuff under the radar. Now I know Blue knows what he's doing because you know Blue keeps up with them. But I've been reading little stuff. You know, uh, didn't he bring a kid in from Pine Bluff? Didn't he take one of their kids? Oh, I ain't seen that. Tell I us about your did. new offensive coordinator. Yeah, new new Tell offense us coordinator. About your quarterback room. room. Your quarterback uh, yeah. room. Of course, you know, we want to know about the offensive line. Uh, is it a veteran offensive line? Is it a new offensive line? We want to know about that. Uh, of course, you can't leave out, you know, 
What is he feeling overall about his special teams? Because special teams help win championships. And uh, let's see, how many players uh, from the portal is, does he expect to bring in this summer? Call him and, and tell him that, uh, the SWAC people want to know what's going on in, in Montgomery. Because we hear he's trying to win the SWAC. Okay, so um, I guess I'll send that email to his SID. Yeah, um, send that Blue to said that he took uh, their all count conference linebacker. Yeah, that's what he took a kid from Pine Bluff, right? Yeah, that's what. Blue yeah, said. that's what I thought. I'm telling you, the guy making moves. This guy making. And listen, we gonna have to put a microscope on this coach Eddie Roberts. We we going to start watching him, keeping up with him. Where's Mr. Campbell at? You know he's supposed to be on there with some excuses and and and. You well, know, I think you, I think you, uh, pretty much covered any and everything I said about family. You. you had a rebuttal for it. No, so no, no, no. Nobody can listen. Family. Nobody can make an excuse for family you like Mr. Campbell. <laughs> you know, when he gets to making excuses about everything, you just just stop. I stop talking because he the boy likes. I'll be waiting this and that. What the, what's going to be the excuse tonight? <laughs> you know what's going on tonight all right mr Ford, we're gonna come back on here on thursday okay all right well i hope that uh I'll and get unless there's some breaking news tomorrow then i'll have an emergency live but until okay then, so i'll be checking be hey and by the way did, did bubba is bubba coming back at bama state or, or is he graduated or is he I gone bubba declared for the nfl draft you can't come back from oh, that oh he did I thought he was in the um. I I, I could have sworn that somebody said Bubba declared. He gone. He gone. He gone. Let me go ahead and play for it. He made it big time, Willie. 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 He gone. <laughs> he he's gone. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> um Bubba what? declared for the draft. Oh, okay. And they, somebody done. said they also lost their best corner. Bubba had more eligibility, but I'm pretty sure he was tired of the swat. Oh um, yeah. Okay. Okay. You know, not declaring him uh defensive player of the year he said forget this and he declared for the draft so yeah they they, they gave it to isaiah major didn't they yeah yeah they that's what they yeah they gave but uh major was uh defensive and, and musa was offense right yeah yeah oh yeah Okay, well, I'll be looking for, I, I'll, I'll check tomorrow if, to see if it's the breaking news, and, and I'll definitely be tuning in Thursday night. Oh, they said, um, Blue said Demarcus Cunningham is a really good, yeah. see, this is what we need. We need some linebackers. Hey, we got Blue, the, we where's got this kid the, from? Hey, Blue, where's Cunningham. this kid from? Where, where is he from? Is is he a freshman or is this a is this a portal kid? What is this? Is this is this a freshman? Did he say if it was a freshman or is it a portal kid? I'm waiting what? on him to answer. He gonna answer. Okay. 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 And what what what's, what kind of size we talking blue? Mister Four, we gotta go to bed. I know what I'm just asking. <laughs> He's from Bessemer, Ala Bessemer Alabama. Alabama. That's outside of Birmingham. He was a sophomore last year. Okay, okay. What what he, and, blue, what kind of size are we talking? You know, Mr. Ford, we're gonna get that size for you. Yeah, and we'll then get we'll get uh we'll get you gonna be on here on Thursday so you can ask one of the coaches yeah. some questions. I want you to call when when you when you come back on Thursday. I want you to have called Coach Eddie Robinson to see what he up to. 
Okay, six foot, two hundred and ten, or something like that. Oh yeah, that's good sign. Okay. That's a good size for a linebacker. Yeah, that's. I mean, if he uh, and then Not the thing is, weight on him. Yeah, is he fast? It, 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 the the thing about them linebackers is when they got that foot speed. Okay, well, you know, Blue is low key about to be a scout or something, so I'm sure he knows. Oh yeah, yeah. So oh, on yeah. Thursday, I'm gonna come on here. I'm gonna send the SID. Uh, all these little questions on here so you can ask. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's find out. Because we need to expose Coach Eddie Robinson. Let's see what he up to because he's sneaking around doing stuff. Man, I wish they would put that in the box. The only thing good in Alabama State is the stadium and the stingets. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, we're going to leave out uh, to, of course, my favorite song of all. Because, you know, I've had some sleepless nights these last couple of nights. Um, but you know what? I won't complain. So that's what, right. that's what we're going to end out to is I won't complain. <laughs> all eyes on Bama State. I got oh, you, Mr. Ford. I like Come that. on here. I like, hey, I like that. All eyes on Alabama State. Yeah, y'all keep like your that. eyes off Jackson State while we work. So I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> complain about that. Y'all go on like ahead that. and watch all Alabama eyes on, State. I like that, bro, Karen. Yeah, all eyes on Alabama State. Good night, Mr. Ford. Okay, have a good one here. I've had some. And when I, when I look around, and I think things are well, all of my good days.
I won't complain. Yes. If Miss Donna, <laughs> there's still a hundred folks on here, so y'all must want to see it too, huh? Not allegedly, we have a video of I won't complain by a familiar face. So we're going to see if Miss Donna going to post it real quick. This should be interesting. I ain't trying to start nothing, but I didn't start it. I just report in the news. Um. All right, y'all. Y'all done called Miss Donna telling her where where is the video at, Miss Donna? I had to play, I won't complain because I had to realize that this is not in my control. are done jay but miss donna said that she has a special video so this is like after the credits roll and then there's something that that's at the end so if you stay till the end you get to see it but if you got off early then you didn't get to see it so i'm trying to see if she gonna post it Pastor Prez allegedly is singing a song. And we're going to see if she's going to post it. I don't know. Yeah, this is a, pro, this is a post credit scene. So hopefully all the rattlers are gone because if Coach Reed leaves. She made it big time, Willie. Willie. All the little memes that I was using for them, I'll be using. Uh-oh, EA still in here. He gonna go snitching. This is us getting that money together. For 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. <laughs> Our money good. Our money good.
Y'all remember when that happened? <laughs> they was looking for the money for the coach. For the coach. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140. <laughs> and then, fam, you was in shambles. I don't want us to be in that position, but it, it was. How you gonna fix it? <laughs> You done messed me on the job of the I done called the police because I'm doing a refund. A refund is due unto me. Don't feel like I've just been abused down here today. God ain't really like this. You can't do the same like this. Boys, I don't even know what's wrong with sitting out here telling the police to See, it's me acting like we we not gonna be in the same predicament. Come on now, Coach Tamika Reed, go ahead and sign that contract. We gonna we gonna buy the season tickets. We gonna do it all, all right? Cause we don't want to be like we don't want to be like them. How you gonna fix it? <laughs> you done messed me on the job this season. I done called the police because I'm doing a refund. A refund is due unto me. Don't feel like I've just been abused down here today. God ain't really like this. You can't do the same like this. Boys, I don't even know what's wrong with sitting out here telling the police to go. I'm gonna stay out here telling the police to go. I'm doing a refund. Cause I'm doing one of me. Listen, y'all, I was trying to see uh, if, you know, Miss Donna was going to put out that, that worship service. Y'all got him singing the song. Let me see. And y'all ready? Y'all ready for Pastor Prez? See, I found it, y'all. I found it. You better sing Pastor Prez. No, for real, for real. This is going to be the last one, though. This is Pastor Prez over here. I had some hills to climb. You better sing, Pastor. I've had some weary days and some lonely nights. But when I look around and I think things over. All of my good days. Yes. I'll play my bad days. I, I won't play. Yes. Sometimes those clouds hang low. Yes, they hang low. I can hardly see the road. Yes. I ask the question, Lord. No. Why, why so much pain? But he knows just what's best for me. All of it now, hearing evil eyes, I could not see. All of my good days, yes. I'll play 
Paulina seen leaving her classroom. Okay, Pastor Press. Okay, Pastor Press. All right, y'all. See y'all Thursday. Good night. Thank you.